episode of Video Game Logic. Today's show was recorded on August 7th, 2018. I'm your host, Gaming Psychologist, and with me, as always, the Sultan of Balls, I think? No, I think that's you. You are the Sultan of Balls. I'm just Caffeine Rage. And you're going to have to listen to a bonus episode or a Franken episode to figure out what the fuck we're talking about. On today's show, we will, of course, be discussing the games that we played this week. There are some big games not coming to big distributors. Star Citizen fans raise pay-to-win objections over removal of in-game currency stockpiling cap. We've got a couple of news topics about Steam. Elon Musk is adding Atari Classics to Tesla software and wants original games for the car displays. We'll have our weekly community corner and our Steam weekly discovery queue. Timestamps will be in the show notes following their respective topics. Hello, Rage. Hello. You know, normally we go for a little bit before we start recording, but I don't know if it, this has ever happened before. <laughs> we started our recording and then went for 20 minutes before we actually started our recording. <laughs> we, we found something, dear listener, on the internet that... Uh, I kind of want to t- tell you about, but I also kind of want to keep it a secret <laughs> for when the the Franken show comes out and you get to hear what we've been doing for the last 20 minutes. You make it sound it's so wonderful. dirty. Uh, it is kind of dirty. <laughs> we made it that way on purpose. Although some of the things didn't help with that. Like they were encouraging us. Well, they were encouraging me and then I encouraged you. Which I encouraged you back. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a cycle of, of perviness. And? And I approve of and. this. And. And. Indeed, <laughs> and. So we'll just leave that as a tease. Maybe I'll put, like, I'll put a little bit of it in in the, the post-outro uh, song so you can get a taste of what we're talking about. Uh, a taste? And then oh. realize that there's... <laughs> you know, I didn't do that on purpose, but that's perfect. But no, you'll get a taste of it, and then you can realize that there's like another 15 to 18 minutes of that coming in the next Franken episode. Oh, coming. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. I got you good on that one. (laughs) You did. You did. So I'm I'm gonna start us off with a tale of stupidity. I'm just gonna get this out of the way while I'm energetic before I'm tired at the end of the show. So Apple is stupid. iTunes is ridiculous, and Apple Podcast Connect made me want to strangle someone. And I'm glad it's other, not me. The other day. So last week, did you mention it on air, or did you, uh, did you just mention it? No. To me? I- uh, I initiated this entire thing when, well, well, I have to start off with what triggered all this. I was poking around on Reddit and I saw the news article about Alex Jones getting kicked off Spotify from uh, the podcast section. And my, well, my second reaction, my first was, well, I'm uh, shocked it took that long. My second was, wait, Spotify has a podcast section? So I started digging to figure out how to put us on there. And turns out it was all of three check marks on our Podbean account. So uh, we're on Spotify now, by the way. Uh, Woohoo! And actually uh, caused a hell of an upturn on our traffic. <laughs> I mean, we had 90 downloads the day that we got uh, uh, approved. I mean, I realized not yeah. all of that would be Spotify, but damn. Yeah, who knew Spotify... Uh... Did, did some good podcasting. But any, I didn't. But know. anyway, whenever I put that on there, it started bitching about iTunes not being set on uh, the Podbean account. So I did a quick Google search, and I wasn't able to find the active uh, iTunes feed. I was just finding our original one that had 1 through 90 uh, on the episode yeah. list. So I asked you to go check it out because, you know, I wasn't able to find it, but I also wasn't loading up iTunes to go check. Not that you can blame me on that one. No, so the podcast has been loaded. I mean, it was on iTunes the whole time. Yeah. You come to find, like, go through this whole process to find it was on iTunes the whole time. But it's tied to my specific Amazon account. Or not Amazon, God. iTunes account. (laughs) I don't know why I said Amazon. Yeah, so I wouldn't have been able to really check anyway. 
Right. Yeah, so he, you couldn't have checked anyways. But um, l- they migrated all of this stuff away from the way that it used to be done. And that's done why I wasn't finding it. To this thing that they call iTunes Connect, and then specifically with an iTunes Connect, Podcast Connect. What was happening initially that I was trying to log in, and it basically had me in an infinite login loop where you would log in and then click on the link to go to the podcast, and then it would like fail, and then you'd have to go log in again, repeat ad nauseum. So my initial thought was try a different browser, turn it off and back on again, wait a couple of days, or you know, wait a day in case there's a problem with iTunes. Uh, none of that worked. So I went to the forums for a solution. And the solution that I found, initially I was like, this has to be ridiculous. Like, maybe like one of these things solved it, but this is one of those cases where people like attribute false things to... Uh, correlation does not equal causation, mm-hmm. you know? But they were thinking like two unrelated things were actually related, but they managed to accidentally do the right thing. Uh, but no, they were right. The whole thing has to be done, because I did this step by step. Allow me to walk you through the process for how I had to sign in to my Apple Podcast account. Number one, you have to download the iTunes app or program to whatever device you're going to use. Sign into it and accept the terms of service. Fair enough. Stupid, fair enough. Then you have to connect your iTunes account from that to your um, Apple or iTunes Connect account. Okay? Annoying? Fair enough. Fine. Then you have to have a credit card on your account. <laughs> like an actual credit card. You can't use PayPal. You can't redirect to some other sort of payment service. You can't use a debit card. You have to use a credit card and then you have to validate this credit card. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I tried like everything under the sun without doing it. And then finally I was like, fuck it. I'll try it just for shits and giggles. And then, then it let me through, let me through. So you have to have an actual valid credit card on your account. Uh, Then you have to wait for the verification process. Then you have to log in, log back in and accept the new terms of service because you put a credit card on your account instead of using PayPal or something else. Then you have to log into your podcast connect account Tie that to your iTunes account. So you think you already did that once, but no, you have to do it the other way also for reasons? I don't know. Maybe Or maybe it didn't count the first time. But regardless, you have to tie your Podcast Connect account to your iTunes account. All right? Then you have to log out, wait for it to verify, log back in, and then you can check your thing so stupid it took me like two hours to go through this whole process once i was actually trying to do what the thing said i immediately uninstalled itunes off of my laptop once i was done i was like fuck you itunes (laughs) well first i removed the credit card from my account because i don't know why they want that shit on there and then just for like shits and giggles after i moved the credit card i couldn't log back in (laughs) then i removed itunes from my laptop because i did all this for my laptop at work yesterday or Monday, if you're listening to this. Yeah, I in, in the future, obviously. Well, unless they're listening to it in the past, then yeah, you know, that's very impressive. Indeed, indeed. So yeah, that was my one of my two fuck yous to companies for this week, and the other one I'll get to when I talk about games. Yeah, I, I played this. Yeah, week. I do apologize for sending you on that mod goose t- chase. I mean, I think I at least had justified reasons. I did search as far as I could, short of installing iTunes, of course. Yeah, and if you actually look on iTunes, Mm -hmm. like once it's installed, you can see it. Okay. Yeah, you you can see it. You don't actually have to go check. Uh, but Um, yeah, Uh, Spotify was throwing that. Uh, well, uh, Podbean was throwing the error, saying that it wasn't set up, but it was through the Podbean account itself and not attached to the uh, RSS feed. So I think that's why you know. That was going on in the first place. I, yeah. I think. I don't know. I don't usually handle yes. the feed stuff for obvious reasons. Because I don't have the patience. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Although this is the worst one I've ever dealt with. By far the worst. So, yeah. My other 
an issue with companies this week has to do with games I played. So, uh, why don't we just go ahead and, and jump on over to there? Uh, and get, you give you a, tell us about the- give you a moment to cool down before you go into another rant. Yeah. So, what games oh, did you well, play this week, Rage? Most of mine is from well, uh, at least at the time of the recording, the newest game, Humble Bundle, because it seems like Humble Bundle is going all ebooks for some reason. I, I don't know why they've gone uh, you know, this route. They have six bundles active, and one is the monthly bundle, which is pretty much always games anyway. And they have four ebook bundles of various flavors. And then they have one games bundle, which is the first games bundle they've had in ages that has a bit in the humble or humble monthly. So I picked that up to try to encourage that uh, behavior, you know? And they also had a couple <laughs> interesting things in it to begin with. It was the sports bundle. And one of the games in it that was on the beat the average tier, which was the thing that I wanted to play on PC for a while. And I played on, on a mobile twice. Motorsport Manager. Yes, we're all the way back to Motorsport Manager. <laughs> Woohoo. And it is quite different on PC. It's a lot deeper of an experience. And I know that sounds like a very obvious statement, but that's not always the case with a mobile port. But it was a welcomed thing that... It's a lot more of an active experience on PC. You have to, you have more things to do and you have to actually pay attention to the damn thing. <laughs> because one problem I've hit with Mobile Sport Manager, both the first one and the second one, is that it's a very passive experience. You only really have to make one or two decisions uh, throughout the game or throughout the uh, individual races, I should say. There's nothing to really that you have to do in between the races to uh, uh, be able to be at least competitive. And uh, there's a lot of luck involved, uh, particularly with how your car is managed. Because there's uh, uh, some sort of dice roll behind the scenes, especially a better sport manager too, where uh, it relies on certain stats of your drivers on how much uh, your car degrades over the course of a race. So, yeah. And Motorsport Manager on PC, it adds a lot more management stuff to do. You have to handle your uh, race crew. You have to set up your pit crew and be able to swap them out because you also have stamina on them. That's probably the biggest thing I've noticed is that uh, your uh, crew not only are able to make mistakes, but you are able to specialize them a bit more to be able to try to you know, get a few seconds uh, off that pit time. And also pit time seem to be a lot shorter in this, but that may just be you know, just different disciplines of racing. Uh, and this is more of a career management game than a team management game where it is your motorsport manager, you know, your guy in the motorsport world. Because you are able to swap uh, teams. You're able to co-create your own from the very beginning. Even though I have to admit, making your own from the very beginning is an extremely frustrating process. Because you start with pretty much nothing but a bag of money. And you may think, well, okay, so you got money. Uh, you, you'll at least be somewhat competitive, right? No, you won't be, at least for a couple of seasons while you build up your uh, <laughs> base of operations, essentially. Uh, and even, you know, joining a pre-made team, uh, you don't really get offers for very competitive teams. But then again, it's kind of makes sense that you don't get competitive teams because, you know, you're a new manager coming in. Why would a team that's very competitive need a new manager, right? So, right. Uh, overall, like I said, it's a lot more of an active experience in this game. You're having to watch your tire uh, temperatures in game uh, during the race and tell your drivers to back off or, you know, uh, uh, gun it whenever uh, the tire or temperature warrants it. Uh, there's an actual uh, grip meter. So as uh, the race continues on, uh, rubber get meets the road and then gets left behind. Uh, and it allows you to run harder tires to be able to uh, 
try to keep your lap times up, making uh, use of the extra grip on the road. But also that's uh, essentially reset whatever rain shows up. Uh, the qualifying, and there's actually a, pra- a, a full-blown practice session, which is actually really nice. Uh, qualifying and uh, car management is a lot deeper in this game. I have to say that, uh, yo, it's definitely worth picking up on PC, unless you just want th- something to tinker around with, because it is a lot more... Uh, I- I'm not sure if I'm going to say a lot more difficult right now, because I'm still in the initial seasons, which, you know, it's, you're building up your reputation uh, to be able to get on better teams or building up the team that you're going to be sticking with. And, uh, it's, uh, there's a lot more moving parts. I think that's the, uh, the most fair thing to say. It's a lot more complex, but not in a bad way. So it's a, it's a welcome thing. Uh, there's a interplay between the drivers and the pit crew and the, uh, the mechanics. And as the two get, uh, the, uh, drivers and the mechanics get along together. They unlock additional perks and uh, are able to perform a lot better. Yo, know, uh, especially you know, uh, late at night with some capsaicin. Jared's kind of quiet. Are you? Indeed. <laughs> uh, Frank, an episode to make that last comment make a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, overall, I, I can't really talk too much about the game overall because, you know, I'm still in that initial build up. There's, but it's there's a lot more decisions to make. You feel a lot more like a motorsport manager. Uh, hey, uh, maybe that's why they named it that. And the the <laughs> the free uh, version of the game and even the paid one still feels like a demo to this one. And I would say that it's uh, yeah the best by far on PC, but. If you're just wanting something to be able to just tinker around with, it's definitely worth it checking out on mobile. It's it's not a worse experience, it's a more simple experience. If that makes any sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, I think I prefer uh, playing uh, a pre-made team, though, because, oh, damn, the, uh, the build-up uh, for a new team is just painful. <laughs> I mean, even going to a new team is uh, yeah, not great. But you at least have your initial building set up. Yeah, what team uh, starts up and doesn't even have their headquarters uh, built, right? <laughs> the team that I'd put together on my budget. <laughs> oh, so your budget would be forty million dollars. God, I wish I had forty million dollars. It'd be so amazing. I'd own my own <laughs> home and pay off all my student debt. <laughs> and there might be some money left over. Uh, I, I'm just trying to think of anything else really major to say because, yeah, this is... I've pretty much covered this game twice already. This is more just covering, you know, the uh, new mechanics, you know. Uh, scouting uh, new drivers is a lot more in-depth now, and you're able to actually get some more information on them. Oh, one thing that's uh, interesting is that uh, the drivers are uh, in the mobile version. Uh, it's essentially you know your traditional RPG level up system, where as y- your drivers level up, you could attribute a, an a- attribute point, hence the name, uh, to one of the uh, skills that the driver has up to a certain uh, point where they uh, essentially max out. Uh, in this, they actually slowly gain experience across all their attributes at once. And that's based on uh, their just overall skill level, uh, a combination of uh, your background as a character uh, in the game, um, and some other factors, which I'm not 100% certain on. But I think I like that more, where it's not just, hey, I'm suddenly better at breaking, or I'm suddenly better at overtaking, instead of uh, that slow uh, progression of skill. It feels a lot more natural. I will say that it's I'm still getting the uh, hang of things. Um, uh, the race I was doing just before we started recording because someone showed up early. <laughs> I was actually doing really well, and then my driver kind of broke his car. <laughs> oh, nice! Uh, and in this game, you're able to uh, pull into the pits and fix individual parts. 
but it was two laps left and my driver was in like 14th or 13th place, you know, good enough to, you know, that the uh, CEO of the company would get off my back because yeah, that that's also a thing is that your uh, job could be in jeopardy if you uh, perform uh, poorly too, uh, for too long. Almost like there's a reason why other so many uh, companies have uh, spots for motorsport managers. Huh. Uh, but he ended up breaking his brakes. He he broke too much. He <laughs> he broke too much and broke his brakes. Yeah, which it may be my fault that I didn't upgrade the brakes enough because there's also the ability to uh, both improve and uh, uh, improve stat wise, but also make it so that parts are more reliable because the starting parts that you get for the car at least at the beginning of the first season, is abysmal. But it may just be that I'm on a low-tier team to begin with, so that's also probably uh, mixing into things. There's a different... uh, You know, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer in this. But there is room for upward progress. It's just a slow, slow grind. But it's a management game. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. It's a slow progression. It's not like the mobile game where if you play long enough, as long as you don't make a stupid mistake or the weather doesn't dick you over, uh, you are pretty much guaranteed to win. Which I actually like that. But then again, you know, I do like my hard things. <laughs> Aw, yeah. But yeah, I'm. I think that's pretty much Motorsport Manager. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you're into the management uh, genre. Uh, it probably helps a little bit more if you know the uh, the disciplines of racing that you're taking part in. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's necessary. Uh, just need to know that really the terminology and some of the uh, different things, especially tire compounds. What tires to use when? That's what's really tripping me up in this is that it's a lot more detailed. So certain tires are a lot better in certain weather conditions and I haven't quite gotten that down yet. And also certain weather conditions also make it so that certain tires aren't nearly as effective as they would be because they overheat. So on a hot day, you don't want to run very, very uh, soft tires because they tend to overheat and then uh, kind of melt off the car. Yeah. And that's a bad thing, by the way. (laughs) Yep, <laughs> that is a bad thing. You are right. Uh, so uh, the other racing game that I played, uh, also from the same bundle, was Grid 2. Which, uh, for those who are keeping count, that's uh, the sequel to the original Grid, by the way. And I didn't play this nearly as much as Motorsport Manager. And I have to say that I think this is maybe the poor... Uh, the, uh, the place where Codemasters, st- uh, at least the Grid and Dirt series, started to kind of lose their flavor, is that uh, Grid 2 feels a little, I don't know, dull, I guess. And I think it really ties into, uh, well, the main thing is that, remember how I talked about Dirt 4 having the uh, procedural map generation uh, ages ago? Yeah. It started with yeah. Dirt 2. Or if it uh, didn't start with Dirt 2, uh, Dirt 2 really, really emphasized it. Where they have what they call live routes, where certain races, it's not all races, thankfully, uh, will have it where you're essentially going this uh, on this procedurally generated track, but let's be perfectly honest, it's not procedural generation, it's chunk-based uh, generation. Where as you race along, it uh, uh, builds the track ahead of you. So you don't quite know what's going to happen, which is a very, very realistic thing for a racing game because the driver wouldn't know what the course is like, right? Well, I mean, after enough practice. (laughs) No, no, no. The course is uh, always changing. So even if you replay the same uh, level, it's going to be a different map. And what's also irritating is also on those, it disables the mini map. So there was a couple times. Oh. There was a couple times that I would, uh, uh, you know, start to pull into a certain uh, to a uh, turn, 
and not realize that's an S turn until it's too late. So I, I'm set up completely wrong on the racing line. But the other cars are able to follow the proper late racing line, which is a little irritating. You know? Yeah. Hey, there should be some sort of variance on that if they're going to try to emphasize corner to corner racing, bro. Because, Bruh. because they do have the whole do bro thing. And they also have the, you know, uh, uh, progression linked to, uh, social media followers. Granted, it's not as irritating as as it was in the crew too but i think it's not quite as in your face even though it does have the counter after every race uh it's still essentially a progression system where your your performance in individual races matters more than you know doing some stupid trick in an airplane sitting upside down while air drifting while Air drifting is just yeah applying the rudder enough, so it's not as annoying to me. Granted, I, yeah, the whole idea of you know social media followers uh, as a progression gate is still irritating, but it makes a little bit more sense in universe for this because they're building up this new racing league and trying to get uh, uh, essentially sponsors and uh, uh, drive clubs to join. So the fact that you know you're uh, you're you the face of the uh, new racing league is a popular racer makes a little bit more sense, you know. Yeah. Even though you're not the one funding it to begin with. And I do have to admit, what's a little interesting to see CNN come up or not CNN, ESPN, with Sports Center, and because it's the custom name driver, and they can't use the you know, the custom name because you know they can't do the full motion video because this I think it was full motion video or if it wasn't it was very convincing with all the filters on it uh, they couldn't name your racer so they just re- were talking about this do uh, <laughs> God, race uh, 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 rising up in this uh, racing league it, you know it's kind of like whenever uh, a cutscene uh, uh, in an RPG uh, doesn't want to use a gender a specific pronoun because of character customization and they don't want to have to re-record the entire script twice or have you ever noticed yeah. that <laughs> no yeah no i've i've noticed that before yeah it's the same basic idea there only <laughs> they couldn't name the character <laughs> oh which amused me overall though it's a very arcadey racer and I think maybe more arcadey than what I like. I tend to, I think I might be a sim racer that just doesn't, that, that just doesn't have the uh, experience with racing games because the lack of a practice mode, uh, the lack of any tuning in the game irritates me, especially whenever they force you to drive particular cars in these events and you don't even have the chance yeah. to really get a feel for the car. So you're going to have to race it at least uh, twice, particularly on some of the more irritating tracks where you know you're driving into the sun and you can't see <laughs> Grant, i don't think that would really help the handling on some of these cars but yeah a lot of the cars are listed as drift cars by the way so you can imagine how racing goes in this game drifto probably a lot of uh power sliding yeah and what's kind of um, at least a little immersion breaking for me on it is that the player character is the only one that drifts around corners. Unless it's a drift event, which I'm pretty sure is in this game. But on normal racing, nobody drifts except me. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm the rising star. I've unlocked the ability of drifting. <laughs> Maybe, but drifting is around corners is slower than not, so... Oh, maybe that's why you're the rising star. You can win even though you're constantly drifting. I've broken physics. And my tires. Because that's the other thing, is that drifting uh, just destroys tires, right? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it does shred tires. But to be fair, you know, racing in this game is like two or three minutes, five minutes for a long race. So, you know, you don't need your tires to last that long. Yeah, your tires might last five minutes. Just like you? 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> I could definitely last five minutes. Uh, especially with some of the stuff you just you bought. Get. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's pretty much just yeah the original grid only you know with the s- social media stuff uh, tacked onto it since I don't think that was really as prominent when uh, the original grid came out. Uh, maybe I'm just getting um I'm uh, losing my feel for Codemaster racing games. I don't know, or I just prefer off road racing. I did get Dirt Rally in this pack as well. Maybe I should give that another shot. So it's now I own it, you know, give it a a little bit more patience with the controller, see if I could actually get it where it's not as damn twitchy. But then again, that's also yeah. more on the sim side of things. Oh, but yeah, uh, overall, it's not a bad racing game. It's just, yeah, you know, uh, I just, there were some things that irritated me about it, particularly that live uh, uh, line racing. And also, since it is a procedurally generated or chunk-based map, there were more than one race that I started seeing the same corners over and over over again, and I wasn't driving around in laps. So, you know, that's definitely a knock on it. There's just something about, you know, going through a corner... Uh, hanging a, a left, a right, go down a long straightaway, and then go down the same, co- uh, go through the same corner that you went through just a bit ago, you know, for uh, verbatim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like a magic race. Yeah, that that irritated the hell out of me in Dirt Four when I was trying that out on a free weekend, and huh, it turns out I found uh, where it came from. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's uh, Grid Two. So on to my last one. Yep. What's your last one? Uh, my last one was my Sunday sampler, Radiant One. And I'm going to try not to talk about this for longer than what the game is actually lengthwise. Because this is okay. a 30 minute game. And I didn't realize that at the very beginning. This is a point and click adventure where you are a guy that is experiencing, or not experiencing, but ex- experimenting with lucid dreaming. And he ends up causing some sort of, uh, essentially blurring the world or the line between reality and, uh, the dream world, which unlocks these creatures that keeps trying to kill him, uh, while he's asleep. There, there's a lot to this game that feels like it could have been fleshed out a lot more. There's a lot of time jumps where they were talking about, uh, uh me, within the first five minutes, they talk about him spending weeks uh, lucid dreaming uh, uh, every night, slowly bur- uh, blurring the line between reality and dreams. But why don't they show that? Right? Right. Uh, this is... Wait, they're not... Uh, Sorry, keep, keep well, going. This keep is going. a very pretty game. They The art style is very nice, but... They skip so much uh, potential uh, content to essentially just give a very crib notes almost version of what the story would have been. Like I said, I went through this game in 30 minutes. And that is taking my time and making notes, by the way. You could probably do it in 25 to 20 if you, you know, just are playing. Uh, That's not even, yo, trying to rush. Uh, yeah. Essentially, it, uh, I'm not sure how much uh, spoilers I should go into on this, but it, essentially, uh, he remembers a conflict between himself and his brother, and his lucid dreaming is uh, a, a, trying to uh, him trying to resolve that in his unconscious mind, even though that's not even what lucid dreaming is supposed to be about, right? Right. It's supposed to be a conscious, uh, you know, shaping your dream. And this is kind of the reverse of lucid dreaming. <laughs> and in uh, all of this as well, there's some of these creatures that are from the dream world that is actively hunting him when he's asleep and it's actually able to hurt him. There's one point where he gets slashed on the hand and he wakes up and he has uh, a cut on his hand. So, you know, uh, you know, you die in the dream, you die in reality, all Matrix style. It's just a very, very strange thing. 
that feels like it needed at least another a plot revision or two, you know, uh, to be able to really kind of hammer this home and, you know, actually develop the plot. This feels like the rough draft of, you know, the outline of what they wanted to do, but didn't really have the money to be able to do the full story. So they just, you know, did three or four time jumps. And no, I'm not joking. There are three or four time jumps in a half an hour game. Huh. I mean, I like the art style. Yeah, yeah that's a, I like yeah, that's a the rich, imagery that they're yeah, showing. Yeah, I like off the here I like the, the imagery page. and I like the idea of it behind it. Uh, but once I started getting into it, and uh, this is a mobile port, by the way, so that may be part of the reason why it's so short, and also why it has such an odd control scheme, which I haven't even touched on. Uh, but there's a lot of really interesting and really good ideas behind this that are just muddled. I mean, uh, the, the, one of the screenshots is in, uh, from like two thirds of the game. <laughs> uh, but, uh, the control scheme, let's get, uh, get into that. Okay. So, uh, on one of the screenshots, you can see this, uh, circle with a line on it, or with an arrow on it. Uh, this is a, essentially a direct port from their mobile port where, you know, thankfully they at least changed tap to, uh, click where everything is revolved around this circle with a dot in it. Uh, for some uh, things you have to uh, tap it or click it. For some you have to click rapidly. For some you have to click and hold. And for the more irritating ones, you have to click and drag. And you may think, oh, well, click and drag. That's not so bad. Uh, well, it's click and drag, then go back to the dot and click and drag in a different direction if it requires you to do two in a row. And there's a couple of sequences in the game where I screwed up because I didn't realize that it was constantly going back to that dot. Because at first, you know, it was you know, uh, click, click, and, uh, click it a couple times, uh, click and hold it, and now drag the dot. But it essentially is acting almost like a joystick. A uh, 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 on-screen joystick, which makes it very irritating to use with a uh, mouse and keyboard. It's just a, a weird, weird design choice, which I assume is just, you know, kind of the lazy mobile port. And you also are hit, getting hit with the mobile tax, or the PC tax, even though this is a $5 game. It's $2 on uh, on iTunes. Or, sorry, uh, I, uh, uh, the iStore, the Apple Store. So, yeah. Do you think that this game would be better and its original intended platform I think on so. a mobile device? Uh, it, it's, it has the right uh, price point and it also, it, it's one of those games that, you know, you pick up and have the quick experience and that's it. On PC, and as a matter of fact, I talked about that on the Sunday Sampler where I think it's a difference in expectation because coming at it as a PC game, I expect more, especially when they do multiple time jumps. Where they talk about, you know, the importance of him, uh, learning how to control the lucid dreams and blurring the line between reality and uh, the dreamscape. And the fact that they don't show it and showing him go too far. I mean, I played the game three times in an hour and some change. I mean, barely an hour and some change. And that's including recording. <laughs> so maybe it's just me being too demanding of this game uh, because I'm coming in as a PC gamer but I really think that there was a lot more here that they could have explored and that's what really disappointed me I'm not, I'm not mad I'm disappointed especially with the art style because the art style is done really well it has sort of this uh, almost comic book like uh, art style to it that's very very detailed and I did hit a yeah. uh, at least one pathing bug because this is essentially a, a point and click adventure with the mobile thing on top of it. And there was a couple pathing issues that uh, there was one point where you go through an elevator and he kept trying to path through the closed doors. And because it's such a short game, any bugs are magnified to begin with. I mean, it's not a game breaking bug, but at the same time, it's an irritating thing. But yeah, I'm I'm just yeah. very disappointed by this because I was really going to this hoping that it was going to be a, a, 
well, I shouldn't say hoping it would be an interesting adventure because it was, but you know, something uh, more substantial than just this little morsel. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, it is it's it's still, still it in the. Cool. <laughs> I mean, it's still in that um, uh, very impulse buy range, and the overall story is very interesting. But yeah, I just wish there was more. Yeah. And this is from a developer that, uh, this is their th- third game on Steam, uh, their second one, uh, really fell apart. It was, uh, essentially a Left 4 Dead clone. And their first one was actually a pretty decent hit, but they sold it to their publisher. <laughs> so, uh, it makes me wonder, uh, you know, if they're trying to focus on more on mobile ports. Or, or not mobile ports, but uh, more on the mobile uh, platform because uh, their last major game on Steam uh, just didn't sell that well, which is uh, very possible. And I think that's about it, unless you have some questions about it. I don't think so. I might, I might try this out uh, on mobile. I've got a few. Bucks well, it's on my... iTunes only, or uh, oh. it's on Apple only so far. Oh. Well, <laughs> shit. If it, if it comes to the Play Store at some point, I might try it out if I've got a couple of bucks. Yeah, I think you I, just hang yeah, out. I think in my it account. would uh, be more interesting to you because of your professional bla- background. Uh, because yeah. there's a conflict here that uh, uh, the lucid dreaming kind of uh, brings up uh, in his subconscious. But yeah, you know, once yeah. again, that's that's not what lucid dreaming is. And maybe if they showed him, you know, uh, going too far, you know, uh, especially since he's wearing himself out as well. He's doing this so much he's not actually sleeping, which I'm not sure if, uh, you know, that is an issue with lucid dreaming or not, because I never researched that. I have enough uh, trouble with my sleep. I don't need to add that to it. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But, you know, he's just beat to begin with. So, you know, maybe this was all a nightmare. Yeah. Maybe so. So, uh, time for your uh, second grievance. Right. So, uh, so let's go talk about the only other game I've played this week, or the only game I played this week, which was uh, No Man's Sky after the next update released. Oh, what? You're not playing for this one? <laughs> Hi-yo. Hi-yo. Um, uh, yeah, got back into that um, after the big update released. Many thoughts, but my first thought is, Jesus fucking Christ, the optimization on this game is so bad. So bad. It's gotten... It's It, it was kind of hit or miss before. Um, in general, I could average 60 plus on all but like the most horrendous of planets, like with horrible weather effects and like wacky crazy amounts of terrain and shit that you have to deal with or like whenever i got to my base um because it's one of those things that just like the more stuff you build into your base the more complicated it is and that really kills performance but with the next update um it it's got even worse there are even more people complaining about the game's performance than perfor- than before and it doesn't seem to be biased, like, just against AMD hardware. Um, it's just pretty much across the board, poor performance, unless you're just one of the lucky people to to have the right hardware combination that likes, or, you know, that, that likes it. But there are things that drag it down sub- a substantial amount. And this is where my other company grievance comes in, with uh, Fuck Windows 10 <laughs> and um, the game DVR in particular. So I, I've turned this off, or I had turned it off, but as Windows 10 is one to do, uh, oftentimes with updates, but also sometimes randomly just because it wants to, it will turn change settings, turn things back on, uh, completely reset any audio setup you've got, you know, that just that sort of thing. You know, it just, it just fucks with your stuff. And the game DVR... Uh, was dragging my performance down by about 50%. And so with like everything turned to the minimum, everything turned off, initially I was getting like 35, 40 
FPS on the in the best locations. And on most planets, it was unplayable, like slideshow quality. So I uh, looked into that, and everyone was like, hey, this uh, game DVR just just completely wrecks this game, and if you're playing it on PC, just double-check to make sure that game DVR is turned off. And it had turned itself back on. So when I, then when I turned that off, um, and after some fiddling with the settings and things... Uh, I got it to run at 60 or greater in space and in space stations and on sort of plane-ish planets and then somewhere between 30 and 60 for planets and it's just the more shit that's going on with planets, the lower the frame rate. And then my base is like still like 20 or 25 frame uh, FPS, so... I just avoid my base as much as possible. Doing a bunch of exploring right now. Um, but the things that they've added to and changed in the game, besides destroying its already <laughs> middling performance, uh, the list is pretty good. They completely changed the um, the resource system. I mean, it's still you know shooting rocks to mine resources, but instead of there being so many different resources. Um, they've created sort of a resource tree and have added refining to the game so you can refine materials up to the resource you need so no longer do you have to like sometimes scour the galaxy for that one particular resource to craft warp fuel now it's like okay i can just get the basic resources if on any planet and craft those or, or refine those up to whatever i need to to craft my warp fuel basically um, and this has really simplified the process for um, all of the crafting in the game, which makes the crafting system a little more bearable. It's honestly got a pretty shitty crafting system as far as that goes. Um, that's always been pretty bad. But just simplifying the resource trees has helped with the crafting system pretty immensely. Um, they've made inventory management a little better. It's still not great. But now you don't have to, like, drag and drop everything anywhere. If you want to move something to a different inventory, you just uh, hover over it and hit X. And it'll, you know, it'll bring up a menu and, like, transfer this stack to what inventory. And you can quickly move stuff to your ship inventory or one of your vehicles, like your, your rovers or a storage container at a base or on a freighter. Um so that's an improvement. There's lots of little UI improvements and things too. The HUD is more understandable. Uh, there's more information that is displayed that helps you out. Um, they actually have a, a menu key to pull the HUD back up without having to draw your weapon. So you don't accidentally shoot things that you don't want to whenever you're wandering around. Um, but the HUD like naturally fades on its own so that you can take like get better screenshots, I guess. Although it's got a fully fledged photo mode with lots of effects and things, and that's been in the game for. Oh, a while, it has filters. But... Mm-hmm. It's got filters. It's like, uh, like Snapchat. <sighs> um, I've already taken a number of new screenshots and added them to my uh, rolling background um, folder. So that's nice. Uh, or my desktop background folder that cycles through. Um, they completely, well, they didn't completely, they, they changed up the procedural generation model a bit to try and increase the diversity of things. And I will say that I've noticed, uh, new ship designs that I didn't see before, new creature designs that I didn't see before. Um, it's hard to tell how much the terrain generation has changed. Um, I certainly have been finding more interesting things on every planet that I've been to so far. It's not like every three seconds, like, ooh, there's a thing. But instead of wandering around sometimes for 30 or 40 minutes to try and find a thing without using a special scanner to locate. So it's not like uh, this is, oh, this is the chartreuse planet. This is the maroon planet. Yeah, yeah there's, there's more stuff on the planets. The... There's still single biome planets, but there's a little more variety, I think, in the, the terrain and things like that. Although it completely wiped out any bases that you had before, because regenerating the terrain would have changed the areas where the base plots were. 
Although now there's no base plots. You can just build anywhere. You uh, craft. Um, oh, you can like plot it down anywhere. Yeah. You craft a, a base like marker and you can plop that down anywhere and start building a base. Um, it took me a little bit. I thought that, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought that I was experiencing some kind of glitch. But because of some things that I had done with my base before, I actually had to put it in a specific planet type. So I thought I had lost my base forever, and I was like, fuck, I might have to start this whole process over. I'm still, like, learning how the new changes work, but it turns out, like, there's a little quest that you get um, that is like, hey, you should go find a suitable place to plop down your base. And it it took me to a place where I could build it, and then it just, like, spawned. So it's it's not gone forever, which is good, um, because I put a lot of time into building my base previously. Um, although I avoid it like the plague half the time because <laughs> of the frame rate issues. Thank God I completed the whole, all of the base quest lines because that's people's biggest complaints. Um, so many base quests are bugging out because you get a number of quest givers at your base, uh, in order to unlock it's sort of like a glorified tutorial for how a lot of the, uh, in-game systems work. Uh, you know, you get some extra stuff about crafting, about growing plants, about terrain manipulation, you know, the vehicle stuff, a few other things. It basically acts like a glorified tutorial for that. Um, but there are missions that aren't spawning or missions that aren't completing, rewards aren't spawning, things like that, mm -hmm. that people are having tons of problems with. And I've already done all of that from the past uh, update. So you get like daily quests now. They're not daily quests. They're, I mean, they're quests that are on a timer. Every two or three hours, you can complete one. And you, um, they just encourage you to explore the area, at least so far the ones that I've gotten. Are like, take a, take a screenshot of this type of biome or this type of thing. And then, you know, you get unique items. Um, most of them are just, they sell for a lot of cash. But uh, some of them can be, like, broken down for resources and stuff. So that's, you know, nice little extra thing. So, I mean, the questing uh, system has been... Uh, do you have a quest to go find Spider-Man if you're taking pictures? <laughs> yes, take a picture of Spider-Man. Uh, the questing system that was added in the last update, Atlas Rises, I think is what it was called, has been expanded upon. And there's now additional, like, guild quests that once you've done enough stuff with a faction, you unlock, like, some higher level faction quests. Um, all of the space stations and bases have been redesigned both to have more types and also that they feel more alive. Previously, uh, basically every base station or every space station or base can be broken down into land ship at place, walk into one of two rooms, interact with NPC in rooms. And sometimes there would be two or three NPCs in a room. But now there are many more NPCs, and also some of them kind of wander around a little bit. So it seems like there's actually activity at the base. What the, and, and is also, there in many more rooms? There are many more rooms. They've all been visually redesigned. The insides of all the space stations are basically the same. There's some sort of decorations that are different, um, and I'm not sure if that's like based on what race owns the station or if it's just sort of random. But uh, yeah, they they still look. They they look better. They look more inhabited, you know, more lived in. Um, let's see, what else am I missing? Now, is it the, I mean, the biggest thing that future, they? Yeah, you know, are we talking Star Trek or you know, uh, Star Wars right now? Say sorry, is say that the, again. Uh, I miss... it, well, I realize Star Wars is not the future, but you know, uh, does it look more beat up or you know everything's uh, super shiny? Oh no, everything's very shiny. Oh, so the Star Trek universe. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else am I missing? Uh, there's this whole new update with the, or they've completely rebalanced the freighters system and the economy. Um, th I, this is the one bug that I've had. Uh, and it's a, a, also apparently a fairly common bug. There's now a mission that you sort of stumble onto. And it's basically just you defend a freighter from some pirates or something and then the captain is like relieved that you saved a ship and he gives it to you because that makes and a lot so of sense a, yeah so you get a free freighter and it's like a really you know crappy low-level freighter but it still has got like a ton of storage space compared to your ship 
and compared to even what you can do with a base. Um, and they can like jump farther in hyperspace than your small ship can and stuff like that. Um, but a fairly common bug is that you complete that mission, but then the game doesn't register that you own a freighter. <laughs> so that happened to me. I got the free freighter mission. I own the freighter. Like I can go back to the system where the freighter is and land on it and walk up to the, the captain. And it's like, oh yes, this is my freighter. I'm going to talk to the captain and the, uh, I can interact with the things that I can interact with the captain, but I can't actually do anything else with the freighter. I can't build on it. I can't fly it around and I can't summon it to me, um, like to a planet or whatever that I'm at. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, am I just fucked? Am I going to have to like continue to save up to buy a freighter, which is what I was doing anyways. Um, but m- people have said, no, the quest will just sort of randomly spawns every once in a while. Well, that's um, one way to uh, yeah fix it. Oh, I keep doing it. It'll eventually work. Yeah, and then after it spawns, like after the first, like the first time you get, um, you're locked into like one type of freighter stat wise. Like it can appear visually different, but they all have the exact same stats. But after the first time, it can be any freighter. So you might, you can't do worse than the one that you get for than that first. At least one. with that so, attitude. You could get the same, or you could get a better freighter for free. So I'm just going to keep saving up to buy a freighter, and then if I happen to run into that mission again before I buy it, then obviously, well, not obviously, hopefully the game doesn't bug out twice, and I can get a freighter for free. But freighters initially were in the tens to hundreds of millions of of dollars, Um, you know, with even like the lowest crap, the, the lowest class, crappiest freighters being... 40 50 million credits and now you can get that equivalent class for like four or five million which is re which is not hard to get at all even in the the early game um there's certain things that you can get that are you know just farm for shit loads of credits um but am i missing anything else before i get to multiplayer Oh, they added third-person views uh, for ships and players. They added customization so that you can uh, change your character model and, like, paint your gear and equipment. Um, They redid how the uh, weapon or the upgrade system works for all of your equipment and made it better and smoother and easier. Like, before, like, there's certain sort of, like... What's the way to say it? Like, equipment add-ons that you have to craft using materials but there are just uh, you know straight up flat upgrades that are like make your mining laser uh 10 more heat efficient or whatever like stuff like that mm-hmm. that you can just buy and attach to your weapons without having to craft so add-ons. so yeah and you can get those fast and early and they're relatively cheap uh, uh, so do they have the laser dot or the red dot Oh, do oh, you yeah, have to iron sight? Uh, personally, I went for the ACOG. I've always been a big fan of the ACOG sights, you know, but that's just me. Um, but anyways, that whole system is basically simplified and improved. Um, Taking a drink there, sorry. There's lots of other... Not lots of other. There's a few other little changes that I'm sure I'm not thinking of offhand. And maybe there's a few things I haven't discovered yet. Um, I know that they made some changes to the way that freighters work. But since uh, I didn't get my freighter because the game bugged out, I couldn't tell you what those changes are. You know, it's uh, very reassuring that the game, uh, uh, you know, has fixed all its bugs and, you know, it's actually running properly. Yeah. <laughs> that sucks. But uh, the last the last big thing is the multiplayer. Like, actual true multiplayer. Because uh, initially, obviously, there was no multiplayer. That was a huge pack of lies. And then they added, like, this little sort of fable style orb that you could see if you were close to another player and it just and it kept could, you on to hey listen yeah i think you could interact just by like talking to each other like you could talk and send messages but you couldn't actually play together uh but now you can play together and i haven't actually tried the multiplayer out yet we were talking about this earlier i'm a, a fairly solitary player when it comes to games like this because it's for me it's a very relaxing listen to podcast do a thing that doesn't require a lot of brain power experience. Um, 
but several people in our community have been playing multiplayer a lot. So as to how well it works, I can't speak to that, but it was most people's most anticipated feature about the game. So it seems to be working fine. I know there's a load of... Well, I say it's working fine. There's a load of bugs that are associated with it about how that it fucks up your game too. Uh, sort of like your traditional multiplayer issue stuff. Like, uh, it'll register progression for you and then make you unable to complete quests because it like the game thinks you're on a different quest. Or terrain generation doesn't work properly in both games, so you could wind up stranded if you exit out of someone's game and you're in some sort of custom environment that you've built together, but you weren't the one hosting it. Um, and it's got things like where players can't have more than one frigate or more than one freighter in an area at the same time. So only one person can have their freighter summoned at once. Um, there's all the ones I can think of right off the top of my head. But most people seem to be enjoying it overall. I don't like the the two biggest things, multiplayer and third person view, I couldn't give a shit about. I still play the game in first person. I tried third person and there's like nothing wrong with it. It's not bad per se, but I just prefer the first person view. It's easier to play the game from first person. Um, just interacting with things. It suffers from that old school like third person, I would say like Marwin problem where even though Wait, Marwin like Marwin had third says, person. I, yeah. I was joking. Okay. But yeah, like it say, you know, it says you're looking at this direction and you're going to interact with this thing, but you might not really. At least there's no guards that are going to kill you if you accidentally steal something off of a table. But uh yeah. I don't uh, I don't care about the two biggest things that people were so excited for with the the new update. Um overall, I don't know how I'm coming off as sounding um mildly about disappointed. how i feel about it uh i'm not really disappointed i wasn't really expecting much oh so you're angry no i'm not uh i mean it's it overall it's a, a solid game it was a solid game after the last update atlas rises that added like the actual story to the game and the questing system and stuff like that so that there's actually things to do if you get tired of just shooting rocks um uh, they fixed they fixed a lot of the problems with the game and gameplay itself. They introduced God knows how many new bugs with this update. But I think that this is pretty close to the product that they were touting at launch. It took them two years to get there, but I will give them credit for not stopping because they could have taken the money and just left and, you know, had a bad reputation and everyone moved on to other studios, but they kept plucking away at it and it, as long as they don't quit now and they fix a whole bunch of the bugs and the performance issues um this could bump from like a you know a solid b to to b plus game potentially up to the a minus territory if you like this sort of game i mean still like i said this last time with the last update i'm saying it with this update if you don't like this type of game this very you know exploratory focused very survival crafty you know, space Minecrafty type of game. Um, if you don't like that, this isn't like changing the game so that you will. You still wouldn't like it. But again, if you were on the fence um, due to the quality or the issues or whatever with previous iterations of the game, um, it's a better game than it was after the last update. And the last update made it into a pretty good game. So, um, Definitely worth a twenty dollar purchase, twenty twenty five bucks. You know, it, it's up to you if you feel like. Actually, I would say if you really like this type of game, you're good for you know thirty thirty five bucks. Um, if you're sort of interested in this type of game and you want to check it out, you know, ten fifteen bucks I would say is is a pretty good price for it. I mean, you can always wait to see if it goes on sale for a few bucks, and at that point, you know, why the fuck not? But I I don't. I don't think that you're, like, going to be wasting your money if you buy this game now. As long as you're at least somewhat interested in the concept. So, yeah. No Man's Sky. Pretty pretty good. Pretty good. Needs some performance improvements and some bug fixes. 
But, uh, you know, that pretty much goes for every game nowadays. Almost like the whole live service thing is a uh, very, very big piece of shit. Yeah, something like that. Oh. So, uh, yep, that's the games that we played this week. <laughs> and it is great time. Because even though the show's only been going for, what, an hour or so? We've been going we've been, much longer. We've been going for... <laughs> yep, <laughs> we've been going for hours. So we're going to go to the bathroom real quick. Or at least I am. I'm not sure if I want to go in the bathroom with you. <laughs> well, you can wait your turn. I'm not sure if I want to go after you. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least not without a gas mask. Ooh. <laughs> because yeah. odds are you've been eating cheese. Or some sort of dairy. Because you love hurting yourself. Uh, not today. Although I'm still suffering from the dairy I ate on Sunday, so. <laughs> we went to, uh, okay, I'm, I'll, t- I'll tell this story real quick. We went to the, uh, the Monkey Town Brewery, which is our local pub, and they have the best beer cheese I've ever eaten, eaten, <laughs> eaten in my entire life. It's so good, I'm forgetting how to speak. Um, and, and? And they have, and, and, they have Irish <sighs> nachos. Which are which is corned beef, their homemade chips. Uh, what else is on there? You really can't tell anything else that's on there because it's slathered in beer cheese, just absolutely covered in what must be like. I, I, I'm genuinely not joking. It must be a quart of beer cheese. It's so much, and we ate it. And I ate lots of it. And then also I got an order of beer cheese with my fish and chips and ate that. And then we brought some of it home and I ate that later. So I've been suffering for two days. So time to move on to our first news story or combination of news stories for this week. Um... Some big games are not coming to big distributors. We had uh, two games that are not going to be coming to big flat platforms. The first is Fallout 76. is not going to be on Steam. And the second is Fortnite uh, on Android is not going to use Google Play. So... Yeah, uh, should we talk about uh, Fortnite first? Because that's probably the more interesting one of the two. Yeah, we can do that. We can talk about Fortnite first. Yeah, Basically, they're going to try to get around the 30% revenue share because they feel that it's disproportionate, as uh, Tim Sweeney says. And it's a very odd thing because typically, if you're using anything but Google Play, and this is even some of the bigger distributors, you know, uh, Amazon, uh, Humble Bundle, their own uh, uh, app. They also require the use of unsigned apps. And it seems to me, now maybe I'm old on this, but encouraging the teenage demographic to disable that security feature seems like it's a bad idea. <laughs> is, it, is this just I'm old and thinking of the children? Wait a minute, that sounds wrong somehow. <laughs> um, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it that way, honestly. Like, that thought didn't even cross my mind. Just for me, this whole thing has been like, huh, they're thinking, or they're assuming that, like, they're big enough that they don't need the the all of the publicity and marketing that being on the front page of the Google Play Store would give them. Yeah, well, to be fair, they're kind of right on that. I mean, uh, Fortnite certain... is just stupidly popular. Yeah, with the uh, younger demographic. I know that's a huge demographic, but they don't have the spending power that older people would have. That's always been the thing. Like, you have to be able to market something to the kids in such a way that the parents can go for it. And I suspect that there are still lots of parents that don't quite understand this whole Fortnite thing. 
Yeah, like, but I think that's going to be parents, less. I think that's going to be less than what it would have been, you know, ten years ago. That's true. That's true. Um, but you have to imagine that they would get a boost just in general from being on the Play Store, and is that boost that they're going to lose be balanced out by also not having to give the thirty percent revenue share to Google? Also, I'm not a hundred percent sure that they couldn't negotiate a smaller revenue share. Like, there's all kinds of closed door business deals that go on, and while Epic is not, you know, Google sized, they're a big enough company. You're saying they're big epic? enough. They're Epic sized, but they're not Google sized. <laughs> um, they're they're a big enough company with enough of a backing, um, enough of a customer base that I could imagine that they could do some negotiating. I mean, I, you know, they, I don't think they could get it down like way low to the teens or single digits, but I think they could get somewhere between 5 and 10% knocked off of that revenue share. If well, they I, went and well I imagine that this is not something that they're taking like, lightly, that they've done a lot of cost-benefit analysis on this. And yeah. they see that that 30% is worth the loss of at least some... Uh, of their uh, free publicity because uh, think about this. All right, sure they lose the Google Play Store, but they are still a major, major player on Android. So they're gonna have all the Android, all the mobile uh, gaming sites talking about them whenever they release a major update. Like all the PC sites talk about Fortnite's PC version. And that's not yeah. on a major platform. That's on its own thing. Yeah. So I'm not seeing it as that big a deficit for them. Uh, I definitely is one. But, you know, it's also running their own servers because they already are. That's, you know, factored into it already. So I, I think this is a very calculated move on them. And it's more getting people to download it and trust them because, yeah. Someone, it's a you know, it's an extra hoop to jump through, uh, and that's the bigger thing than the plug, uh, than you know, just be on the uh, Play Store is, uh, yeah, you know, losing that you know, one touch uh, install. It requires a little bit more effort, and for someone that's not as tech savvy to be able to find that security feature and turn it off, you know, I do think it's going to keep some players off. But I think you know, it is going to help them in the long run, or you know, it's you know, that thirty percent is going to be worth more to them. So I, you know, yeah. this is definitely something that's not being done just on a whim. Yeah, you know, this isn't uh, them being dicks about it. They are being very careful about this. But yeah, you know, they know that they can afford to lose that uh, free you know place on the uh, Play Store. It's just a more interesting thing that it makes me wonder if other major apps will start wondering if they could lose. Uh, you know, leave Google Play as well. Yeah. I'm not sure how many apps, though, have the same sort of support, backing, influence, reach, you know, whatever noun or adjective you want to throw in there, of Fortnite. Like, this is a, a cro- like a cross-cultural phenomenon. In in terms of, like, this is this, gaming... Uh, this is this console generation's Minecraft. Yeah. I think that's fair to say at this point. I think so. Yeah, I was actually going to compare it more to the uh, original Wii, but that's also a, a good comparison to make. Well, just, well like, just software, I mean. Yeah, but just like there are audiences, or there's an audience for this game of people who don't really play other games. And I've, I mean, I've said it on here multiple times before, at least in general conversation. Like, people come into the, to the clinic to meet all the time. All kinds of people that I wouldn't expect to play video games. But, you know, I have lots of gaming stuff in my office. It's a good, like, conversation starter, talking point. And we'll get to talking about video games. And I'll ask, do you play any games? Yeah, I play Fortnite on my PC or on my uh, Switch or on my Xbox or whatever. Like, everybody plays or has played Fortnite. And I'm talking... Oh, so that means I'm a nobody. I'm talking older people, younger people, kids, especially kids, but it seems to be that the older people have tried it and they don't like it. 
Although there's, a, I guess, a couple that have. But I mean, just regardless, you, you know, know that's sort of anecdotal, a very small slice of it, uh, you know, of it. But yeah, you know, we're getting a little off topic here. But what the hell at this point? I think the battle royale genre, it may lend itself to more of a casual player just because there's not as many rules. I mean, I realize that sounds a little odd, especially with, you know, shooters in general are usually at least uh, on a technical mechanical level, very simple. But this takes, you know, all the you know learning of maps, the different uh, areas to go through. Uh, and it takes a lot of those ba- uh, those uh, barriers and removes them. You know, it's just literally okay. You're on this essentially flat field, you know, for the most part. And it says, okay, if you don't want to die, go to this area, kill anybody that you see. A very very simple game mode, and it's very easy to learn. So I think that might be part of the success that and it just caught on something fierce and I'm not exactly sure why it's got so popular. If yeah. uh, if it's not just that st- uh, simplicity or if there's something else uh, beyond it. I mean, hell, uh, remember uh, before PUBG came out, uh, was it in my discovery queue or was it yours that we saw it and, you know, just kind of wrote it off. Uh, I don't remember. I remember but it was in one of ours and, you know, we had no idea what it, what to make of it. <laughs> yeah. But then again, neither of us knew Player Unknown, so, you know. Or at least I didn't. Yeah. So, we'll see how this shakes out. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be fine. It's Fortnite. It's still the hottest game in, in town right now, so... For the foreseeable future, you know, like you said, they they probably did some pretty intense cost benefit analysis of this move and decided to go with it. Um, and that I and also they'll... it allows them to be able to do what they want with the microtransactions. <clears throat> because yeah. uh, doesn't uh, Google have a very tight restriction on that uh, to some dis- uh, to some degree? I don't know, actually. I don't know. I mean, I see microtransactions all over the place, but Google does have some sort of refund system and things available, so they might have some rules for it that I'm not aware of, because I know you can get refunded for for any purchases, in-app purchases within a certain time frame. Um, You basically have to forfeit the app to do so, but you can, you know, it's kind of the Steam route. You get so much Mm -hmm. time. Uh, to just get a blanket refund. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they have, like, strict rules regarding their microtransaction practices. Yeah, this is uh, this article that we're going to be linking to in the show notes. It's pretty much just going all on that 30% and how it's disproportionate to the cost of the services that, the store, or that these stores perform. Uh, and considering most of these... Uh, Developers aren't epic sized, uh, both in the name and the general term. Uh, it looks like a lot less to epic because they're able to run all the servers behind the scenes to, you know, some garage developer, uh, assuming that there's still such a thing as a garage developer these days. It's a lot more valuable, so that thirty percent is worth a lot more. So maybe this is just Epic being the big boy in town and not really seeing the value anymore. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and the other one is Fallout seventy six uh, not coming to Steam, which pretty much uh, keeps me from doing any sort of just you know impulse buy whenever it goes on deep discount. Because yeah, uh, was... no, not 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 because all my games have to be on Steam, but because that Steam wallet it's always that you know few extra bucks already. Uh, but yeah, uh, this I, I think this is uh, Activision wanting to essentially pull an EA eventually. I think they eventually want to make the uh, the Bethesda launcher, or or, or sorry, uh, Bethesda wanting to do an EA. Oh, sorry, I, I'm getting my. Uh, companies kind of 
muddled there for a moment. But Bethesda, I, I think the next mainline uh, Fallout we're not going to see on Steam either at this rate. Uh, I don't know about that. Maybe. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. We, I mean, we there has been a trend over the last several years, starting with the EA and Ubisoft, um, and potentially now Bethesda. Or not really Ubisoft. I mean, Ubisoft does their own thing, but they still release stuff on Steam. Yeah, but it's completely connected to the Uplay, the True. Uplay platform. Like, the, the game won't launch unless you also have Uplay running, and you can open Uplay and run the game without Steam being launched. So, yeah, but that's still a little bit of a happy medium. If they have to do their own thing, at least they still offer it somewhere else uh, on one of the other major dev- uh, distributors. Yeah. So, you know, but, something. I mean, uh, but yeah, I, 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 I love the uh, side note on this. Todd Howard wants uh, you to stop calling Fallout 76 a survival game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm probably never going to play Fallout 76 anyways. The more that comes out about this game, the more I'm just like, nah, I don't want this in my life. And I'm moving more and more away from re- using Steam for all of my games, like, not because, like, of any, like, specific reason or another. I'm just moving away from the Steam wallet. Like, I used to buy uh, Steam gift cards, load them up into my Steam wallet, and that was how I bought games. But as I've gotten older, my sort of, or I guess my self-control has gotten better, so I'm spending... When I'm buying games, I'm spending more from my PayPal or credit or debit account as opposed to using the Steam wallet. I mean, I still use it. I still do trading cards. It's still a nice way to um, get a few bucks, get a few bucks, you know, occasionally make a little money on a game, like run up on the right deal or the right bundle or whatever. But, you know, just generally get a few bucks back from the purchases I make. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the last like during the Steam sale. I had money in my Steam wallet account, but, you know, a lot, ha- like half of my budget was just like, yeah, I'll, I'll spend, you know, this money, and when it's gone, it's gone. And then I don't spend money outside of that. I'm just getting a lot better about having self-control about things. I, I assume that's because I'm getting older and and <laughs> wiser. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know. Oh, was I not supposed to laugh at that? for me. <laughs> and because of that fact, I'm more open to spending money on other platforms. Because before, I was like, just keep it all in the Steam ecosystem. This is how I can make sure I'm not, you know, impulse buying myself into oblivion. But you know, I'm getting older. Plus, what, I'm making you don't more own money. Oblivion? <laughs> Plus, I'm making more money than I have in the past. I mean, it's not a ton more, but I'm I'm making more money than I have before. So I have a little extra to spend now and then. So it's not so much of an issue. Uh, hopefully that trend continues to increase. One day I'll have those pesky student loans paid off and then it'll be like I'm a rich motherfucker <laughs> just because I'm not having to chuck away so much. That and my house paid off. Student loans and house payments are expensive, kids. Granted, I mean, it's not like we bought a house on a whim. Like, we planned it out in advance, but make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, before you took it off uh, the Google Play Store? <laughs> yeah, before I took it off from the Google Play Store. <laughs> that 30% was just too much. It's just too much. The mortgage uh, is too happily, damn high. I would happily give the Google Play Store 30% of my mortgage. <laughs> That's, uh, what's 30% of 800 bucks a month? 400, two, that's like 250 bucks a month. It's 25, it's three grand a year. That I would get back if if the Google Play Store would just you know take thirty percent of my mortgage. Take my mortgage, down, please. Yes, please. I'll I'll put an app on the store for you. I'll develop one. If you take thirty percent of my mortgage. But uh, uh, the the pocket uh, therapist who just asked, "How do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? <laughs> Maybe you should lie down. Now take off your pants." Have you journaled about your experiences today? Perhaps you should consider investing this energy in a hobby. Remember to get plenty of sunlight and social interaction. 
to ensure that your <laughs> Says body Mr. Turtle. as balanced as possible. <laughs> yeah, I hate sunlight and social interaction. I hate sunshines. I hate I hate the sun. <laughs> Can't wait for winter when it gets dark early and stays dark longer into the morning. Well, for me, it's, it's more cold. of the humidity. Yeah. That and I just can bust anyway, so. So, anyways, yeah, Fallout, not coming to Steam. You know, on the Bethesda launcher. Yeah, for, really yeah, for me, it, uh, well, I was just going to say that it's what I usually pick up is on Steam anyway. Because, well, I don't buy a lot of Ubisoft stuff. Uh, Bethesda stuff uh, is just starting to make this uh, transition. Activision stuff, Blizzard stuff. Eh. I have to say, I'm t- I've been tempted a little bit watching some StarCraft, but I realize that there's no way in hell. <laughs> I'm too old. Yeah. And EA, uh, once again, a couple of their little indie titles, but that's about it. So, you know, there's just not been that, you know, temptation, uh, temptation for me. So, plus, I, you yeah. know, I have a few things to play. Yeah, just a few, you know. Alrighty. Uh, our next news topic Star Citizen fans raise pay to win objections over the removal of in game currency stockpiling <laughs> cap. Yeah, I- I'm going to call bullshit on this. I mean, they're just now raising objections. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Star Citizen. Star Citizen feels like uh, like it's just going to be a pod of whales, and that's it. <laughs> Star Citizen is uh, the 21st century version of vaporware. I'm not going to call it vaporware. I think it will eventually come out, and uh, uh, it won't be as grand as most people think it will be that's supporting this game, but then again... You know, it, I doubt it would be anyway, but uh, this uh, this is uh, this is going to be the spore issue where they over promise, they've uh, over developed, and it just falls flat because they focused on things that the general gaming public didn't want. But yeah, yeah uh, the. Source of this, as far as I could tell, uh, as they've gone through various uh, updates, they've removed items, and to be able to you know, not make that a complete dick move, uh, they uh, allow you to essentially trade those items in for uh, the uh, UEC, which is their in-game currency, or one of the currencies, I should say. Now, now I'm taking all this from third party stuff, so I could be completely off base, by the way. So, yeah. But anyway, they removed the cap for this currency, which means that people that stockpiled all this stuff could essentially melt down all their old items and get oodles and oodles and oodles of money. Even though there is a 25,000 uh, credit cap for, per day, yo, know, it still, you know, it's going to be rolling over and over and over and over. And the people that bought in early are able to do this over and over and over again to the point that, you know, they're Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. I always thought that that system was really stupid when they first announced it. It never made any sense to me. Be able to melt down stuff like that or? No, their whole currency cap system, like this whole thing is just a convoluted mess. It's always been a convoluted mess. Are, are we talking about this currency system or, or uh, Star Citizen? I almost call it No Man's Sky, but you know, it's about the same thing. <laughs> it's going to be the No Man's Sky of 2156 when it releases. Into early uh, access. You know, it might actually be like the next... It, it's got good potential to be the next one of these games. You know, the next, the next Spore, the next No Man's Sky, the next... Whatever is Star Citizen. Now the question is, is it going to be for or No Man's Sky where they release it and actually patch it into a decent state? Or just release it, add a couple of expansions and call it a day? And then go work on a cr- uh, crummy sequel that nobody bought? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, but uh, it, 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 does it, cr- still doesn't, it still doesn't work on my machine. I, it still won't launch and run. 
I mean, that's, basically, that's forty dollars I flushed down the toilet. Like, oh god, I five was years ago. Living in, I was living in my apartment still before our last house. Uh, so that was, yeah, five five years ago, six years ago. Yes. I didn't I didn't support it when it was on Kickstarter, but it was after that. When they f- first started selling the the packs for like thirty or forty dollars, yeah, I remember a, a few of the space uh, game YouTubers, uh, particularly Scott Manley, hard selling this game for a while, uh, especially whenever they would do the timed packages, and you, it's only a hundred dollars, and you'll get this ship. And I just looked at that and thought, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I, I just. Don't see how the economy of this game is going to function in the slightest when people are able to buy in at such ridiculous prices and get, you know, a good chunk of the ships in the game. And when the modules come in and they are literally pay to win. I mean, not this accusation where the best racing ship, the best mining ship, the best fighters are all locked behind a paywall. How the fuck has it not been uh, called pay to win before? Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'm interested in is the single player portion of the game. Uh, whatever, 76 or whatever, mm-hmm. module 40, whatever. It's got a number. It's a 90210. Number whatever. Yeah, that's the only part that I'm interested in. And that's not the part that they're developing. Because, of course it's not, because that's not what's going to make them all the fucking money in the world. Mm -hmm. So, I would be interested in some sort of single-player free-roaming mode, but I think that they said that that wasn't going to be the case after the campaign anymore, and they were throwing all of those resources into its online. So, in other words, uh, they're going a GTA V where they're scrapping the single-player development to fund uh, the multiplayer? Yeah, and at at the time, uh, at the time I was playing Eve Online, and I was like, "Well, I don't need this. I've got Eve Online." But I mean, it's way too late to get my money back at that point. Who knows? When it comes out, eventually. your son will love it when he's an old yeah, man. Yeah, my my kid will love it when he's an old man. <laughs> I'm gonna will it to him. <laughs> Into King, I leave my starship. <laughs> Yeah. Dingus. And it's too late to rename it. <laughs> oh. Uh, but they did release a statement. Uh, Cloud Imperium released a statement uh, about the rationale behind the cap removal. Removing the Voyager Direct meant we had to rebalance the economy. And with it, a rebalance... We wanted to offer backers the ability to melt past item purchases made at older, unbalanced prices back to UEC to allow them to spend them on buying items in the game at the new rebalanced prices. Without removing the cap, backers who were melting and reapplying funds would eclipse uh, the overall UEC cap and be locked into their previously purchased items. So we removed the cap but kept the daily cap in place to give our backers options and flexibility. This was purely a development slash platform decision and has nothing to do with marketing or sales and was made not to disadvantage people that had supported us over the years. There has been the case since the release of 3.2 on June 30th that everyone seemed pretty happy with this flexibility in as being able to melt that uh, their items that were pre- previously purchased purchased on Voyager Direct has long been ter- has been a long term request from our community. So it's been a bit surprising to see some people paint this as an issue now, especially considering the context of the change and the general happiness of our community has had with it when it was first rolled out. But hey. It's the internet, and people have to complain about something. That's in their official statement, by the way. <laughs> of course it is. Oh, uh, no, no. Because they don't give two shits. No, no, they this, this is the portion people. of the uh, statement that I really wanted to uh, read. Uh, this is from the uh, uh, 
article, but the uh, full statement, the rather long-winded and bullshit-laden one, will be in the show notes. Another thought. Repay to win. What is win in Star Citizen? We have challenges in gameplay for everything from solo players, well, until they scrap solo uh, stuff, uh, with just an Aurora to a huge org uh, crewing an Idris. We're making a space sim. I don't know, I don't even know what we would qualify as win. That's the whole idea. You play how you want to play and should be able to have fun in a number of ways. Just like real life, you break out your credit card. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, even editorializing this, <laughs> it's still not as bullshit, huh? Yeah. There are multiple paths, and your own success is really measured on a personal level. You know, until you get beaten by a whale. Further, there will be nothing in the game that you can be only be purchased with money. You can't be better. You can't buy better stats or skill. We don't sell magic kill bullets yet. And everything that uh, you can purchase with real money, like ships or UEC, can be earned via gameplay. Oh, but boy, will that be a hell of a ground, won't it? <laughs> yeah, it's not like we haven't seen this before. By allowing players to purchase ships with or a limited amount of UEC, we're just allowing people that want to support the project to uh, a way to do it. It's expensive to build a game of this scope, especially with us in uh, management. It's expensive to run the servers, especially how we run them, that people play on, while not preventing the person that has only bought uh, the basic game package from playing, earning, and upgrading their equipment and competing with people that have spent more than them. Every persistent online game has inequality and starting assets, and even if there's no ability to purchase, as people start the game, uh, their game careers at different times, if you join EVE or WoW right now, you don't have the experience, stats, or assets that someone has been playing for years. We don't see the issue with some people starting Star Citizen with different equipment. As long as everybody gets the opportunity to earn everything via gameplay, which they will. Fuck you. Fuck you and the starship you flew in on. <laughs> I see what you did there. I like it. Also, I would consider it a win state if I could just launch the fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a win for me if it just worked. But it doesn't. I mean, here's the thing. is that They're talking about the, <clears throat> there's no win state because it's an MMO, essentially. But an MMO is chock full of win states. Every quest is a win state. Every mining uh, situation is a win state. Every race is a win state. And being able to just j jump past all the progress. Well, there's the saying that I've seen several of the bigger YouTubers say, and a lot of uh, people st say online. If you offer the option to skip the grind, to skip playing the game. Your game is not very fucking fun to begin with. Yeah. Ugh, and just the tone. I mean, I didn't editorialize that much. <laughs> no, there's just a, a certain snottiness to that. Just almost talking down from the tower, you know? Yeah. I, it feels like this game has gotten uh, to the point where its fan base, uh, its rabid uh, supporting fan base. Well, I'm not sure if I could say corrupted uh, Chris Rogers, is it? But more, you know, it's kind of made him even more snotty because I do believe he's had a bit of an uh, ego to begin with, if memory serves correctly. It's just, yeah, things have gotten crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> I've got something in my throat. Mm. Oh, well, what do you got in your throat? Nothing fun, unfortunately. Do you want something? <laughs> yeah, I'm going <laughs> to grab one of my cough drops here and see if that helps. I had to mute twice while you were talking. There's going to be some fun editing on my end. Yeah, it's just... 
the, the fact that they can release a press statement at all like that, I think is very telling on what the game is going to end up being like. Yo, in 2217. Yo, uh, yo, a couple of years before Half Life 3 comes out. Yeah. <clears throat> and the fact that they mentioned uh, Magic Kill Bullets, uh, that more tells me that they have it on their mind, doesn't it? Yeah, they, they've thought about it. And they said they're not doing it, but yeah, I just. Uh, and I did air to Oz yet, but, you know, I can't be the only one thinking that. Yeah, after I saw saw that, um, just like a couple of quotes from it, mm-hmm. I was like, man, they're being... Uh, Dicks. They're being, yeah. Being very snarky. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I was writing the, <laughs> the press release. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I I have little faith in No Man's Sky. Uh, damn it, I, do, I did it again. I, I think it's going to release in a state like No Man's Sky did, where they promised so much, but eventually the money's going to run out. So, uh, Star Citizen, I think... I'm just waiting for it to flop at this point. I don't want it to, because it looks like a very interesting game. But I have little faith in them. But then again, yeah. you know, when they're selling $30,000 worth of ships and the fact that you can see it until you spend X amount of money tells me exactly where their priorities are. This is a fun generator. For what? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he wants to take over the world. That, that, that's my uh, goal on this. Or, yeah, that's my, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's what I think his goal is on this. Because I don't want to take over the world. That's way too much trouble. Things are sh- uh, too shitty to uh, fix at this point. Yeah, too much be too much effort. Yeah, just launch us into the sun and start over. Do the entire site for Morbid. Only way to be sure. Yep. Uh, but anything else to really talk about this outside of uh, yeah, they seem like condescending dicks on this, and just trying to th- this. This seems like a press release that EA would put out. Or Wendy's. Yeah, but Wendy's, Wendy's does this snarky bullshit all the time. Yeah, but they're fun snarky bullshit. I don't think so. I think they just get away from it because they were one of the first big companies to do it. Eh, true. All right. Well, let's move it on to the next thing. We've got a couple of, of news topics related to Steam. Um, the first one in the list is that uh, Steam Flash sales are okay. Are they rumored or are they confirmed? Because I saw one. This yeah, article says they are, and I saw one news article that said they were rumored to be. Well, coming well, back. Uh, well, the uh, article it said, itself says Steam no, sales are reportedly on their or, or Steam Flash sales are reportedly on their way back. So they just uh, rebooted it from the overall uh, title, but still have it in the body. Essentially. Uh, uh, the person behind uh, Valve News Network noticed a, a string in uh, trying to see if this was on the store itself uh, but they found that there was an, uh, this uh, set of code that said flash sale 6 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours 12 hours, offers ends and and it has the timer. So this points to the ability that the flash sale may be returning, which is an interesting thing, particularly with how the Steam platform has evolved without it and how this last Steam, few Steam sales, <clears throat> they felt a little lackluster, I mean, to be perfectly honest. And I'm not sure if it's just the lack of sales or if it's just, you know, I have what I want, but it's uh, it's from the translation server. Okay, so uh, I just saw it in this. So it's a, a set of strings in the translation server that's being translated to you know, other languages. Yeah. Uh, that points to the possibility that the flash sales are coming back. But my big problem with the flash sales, uh, if, especially if they're short, like six hours, is you know notification because especially during a major sale, 
their emails are delayed like hell. Yeah. Don't don't be, don't get me wrong. I'm actually somewhat excited that the flesh cells may be coming back. Granted, that does bring back the whole you know the flow chart of uh, you know the steam sale. You know, uh, don't buy stuff on the first day. Wait to see if there's a sale. That sort of thing. But uh, the fact that there's no real good notification, even the Steam app is tied directly to the email. Which is irritating as hell. And even the app doesn't say what's on sale. They just say, hey, something's on your wish list is on sale. Good luck finding it. Yeah. I, uh... I never liked the Flash sales. I just found them interesting. You know, something to check out every so often. Yeah, I didn't... I never I never liked that. Because it's... I mean, what it is, is it's a psychological manipulation tactic. Yeah, true. And... And sure, the the flash sale might might have a better discount. It, it could even potentially be a much larger discount. So there could be a payoff for it. But basically, what you're doing is you're keeping someone returning repeatedly to your site, and the more you expose them to it, the more likely they are to purchase something. And that's what the flash sales have always been about. And so not having them is much more consumer friendly, even if occasionally you would have gotten a much better deal from a flash sale. Statistically, you're less likely or statistically, you're more likely to spend less money without the presence of the flash sale. So it's it's a more consumer friendly thing to not have them. Well, it makes you wonder but why they have a brown back sooner then. Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, there's some speculation that I read that, um, that it's connected to the second Steam news topic, which, just to throw it out there and we can sort of work them back and forth, is that um, they're experiencing the largest dip in active users uh, for the, is it for the summer ever? Like, their largest ever dip in active users across the summer? Uh, well, they've lost about $2 million and some change uh, since the last summer. Right. And I mean, they're not hurting. Their numbers are up overall, but they always experience a dip during the summer. You know, people go on vacation or, you know, are doing other activities. So they're inside playing video games less as a whole, but they've had a much larger dip this year uh, percentage wise compared to previous years. So, you know, some people are attributing them bringing the flash sale back to this because in their minds or you know the 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 speculation that i've seen is that uh steam is somewhat attributing this to the fact that their sales aren't as flashy anymore Mm -hmm. flash sales flashy Uh Uh um but you know they're not as exciting anymore and so they're not getting the numbers in for the summer sale so people aren't playing their new games uh, I mean, there's several theories related to that. I'd uh, say it's the a other one I've seen. Of things. The the other major uh, uh, theory I've seen is the Fortnite. F- yeah, Fortnite and the fall of PUBG, because I'm sitting here looking at PUBG's uh, player numbers, and they had uh, well, th- they talked about last year, uh, June, July. So in June 2017, they had a 30 percent growth over May, which brought them up to. Just over a quarter million. July, another 64%. August, uh, 69%. September, another 69%. October, another 64 November, another 22 December, another 7 January, another 10 Then February uh, is a loss of 12 March is a loss of 6 April, a loss of 14 May, a loss of 20 June, a loss of 8 in July, a loss of 13, almost 14, and the last 30 days is down a percentage and a half, uh, losing 12,000 players. They've gone from a peak in January of 3.2 million to a peak in the last 30 days of th- uh, 1.3. So, I know it's not going to be just PUBG, but that is a hell of a drop in a fair amount of PUBG players were... PUBG players. They were not playing other games. Or they may have been only playing PUBG and they went to Fortnite or they went to another one of the Battle Royale games. So, yo, that yeah. is a very likely scenario. Or it may be a combination of this 
the fact that has there been uh, any major uh, releases in the last year or so? Or, or I'm talking about just you know huge releases because I'm struggling to think of any major AAA releases on uh, uh, Steam uh, this year so far. Um, you know I can't. Far Cry. I guess that's probably the biggest AAA release that I can think of for this year. Far Cry Five on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the stuff that comes to mind was that would have actually been last year's releases. Well, like, uh, let's go. Uh, thankfully, uh, because we just had the summer sale, we have the top sellers. So, uh, Grand, this is going to be revenue, but they're they're platinum sellers. The top, you know, whatever percentage. Rainbow Six Siege, uh, GTA Five. Uh, Warhammer 2 Vermintide, or yeah, or Warhammer Vermintide 2. Sorry, let's get that correct. Dota 2, Counter Strike Go, Civ 6, Far Cry 5, PUBG, Jurassic World Evolution, Rocket League, Warframe, and Kingdom Come Deliverance. That's their platinum sellers. Yeah, and most of those are older games. <laughs> yeah. I mean, most, I think most people who are, are PC gamers either only play a couple of, of titles or are like us and typically buy games months, years after they're out when they're on sale Mm -hmm. and when you've got better hardware to play them to their fullest, you know? Um, yeah, I'm just looking down the list, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2. I'm trying to pick out newer games. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origin, even though that's not this year. That's close enough. Uh, the Witcher 3 is a, it's a couple years old now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah 2015. Yeah. Uh, Subnautica had its release, so but it was early access for quite a while. Uh, yeah, a lot of these are older games. So it may just be, you know, a combination of PUBG, uh, Fortnite, uh, switching of uh, power. Uh, not any major uh, releases uh, so far this year. Grand, this may be not quite fair, but I would think a major AAA release would be able to at least hit the bronze, you know? Yeah. Uh, Call of Duty World War II. Uh that's the latest Call of Duty, isn't it? Just, uh, du- I'm doubly checking here. Now let's see. Uh, yes, it is. So, okay, that's in the bronze. So, there we go. Even though that's rated poorly. Dark Souls Remastered. Even though that was given to anybody that had the original Dark Souls. Uh, Shadow of War. <laughs> oh, boy. Did, uh, that got some publicity. And not in a good way. Yeah. So there are a few here, but I think I would say that was yeah, record setting, you know? Yeah. Yeah, M- NBA 2K18. <laughs> Vampire, there you go. There's one that uh, actually was well-received, somewhat. Yeah, but so, Vampire's not a triple-A release. Yeah, it's more double-A. But yeah, I'm 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 picking and choosing uh, from a very small list here. So it may just be you know some uh, rather disappointing releases as well. Yeah, you know, not bringing the gamers back. Yeah, or a shifting of uh, you know to other platforms. You know, GOG, uh, the fact that EA is doing their own thing. Uh, you mentioned Ubisoft already. Uh, Ubisoft doing their own thing. So if you're interested in the uh, you know Ubisoft's uh, you know open world stuff, there you go. Uh, so you know maybe it's, uh, it's just a combination of things. Yeah, I mean it. it or it's just is, a, a you know, a good summer for people to get away. Yeah, maybe so. Hard to uh, hard to know for sure at this point. I mean, it's got to be a combination of things, like just you know, logically thinking through. It seems unlikely that any one yeah, thing I'm just, would cause them. 
I'm just looking at it, but I'm just looking at Steam's uh, top sellers or, or top uh, uh, players right now, seeing where the player base is. Like Warframe is, uh, you know, it has its roller coaster, but then again, Warframe has a larger, uh, uh, kind of roller coaster content. Counter Strike Go had uh, from uh, the beginning of the year three months where it lost player base but quickly regained most of that had one month that it lost 18 percent, but then and then uh, another none so it's not quite back up to where it was but there is that dip from march from two uh, from 672,000 to 420,000 so there's a good dip as well no man's sky it, it seemed to pick up a bit of a player base it's uh, in July. It went up uh, one thousand three hundred five percent. You know, just a little bit, but right. Yeah, just just a little bit. So yeah, it looks like there's a been pretty much this, uh, systemic here. Uh, wow, even uh, Stardew Valley, uh, which I would have thought would have seen a bigger uptick due to uh, the multiplayer release. Uh. It went from beginning of the year twenty thousand. It is up seven thousand set twenty seven thousand right now, but it had losing months all year until May when the uh, multiplayer beta was released. So yeah, maybe this isn't yeah. Uh, this is just a combination of the symptoms here. But yeah, hopefully it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, did we do a good job on those two? I think we kind of wandered off into the weeds a couple of times, as we do. Well, if they don't like us did wandering off. Did you just off... launch? Oh, Steam Idler. I was going to say, why are you playing Galactic Civilizations 3? Because I'm idling cards off of it. Nice. Uh, it I got it for free, that. by the way. We should play We should play that sometime. I'll, I purchased it many moons ago uh, i got it for the uh, the psychological trick of going to chrono.gg and uh, getting coins from there <laughs> nice we should uh we should play a game but, of but that honestly at some I, yeah, point yes i realize it's a psychological trick but i also follow their twitter so i get that anyway <laughs> so i may as well get the yeah. coins and get a free game out of it every so often yeah uh co-op uh galactic civilizations 3 don't have to Hell record yeah. it, at least yet. Hell yeah, we should do that. <laughs> Later. Because right now, we're going to go talk about Elon Musk adding Atari Classics to Tesla software, and he wants some original games for car displays. This was just a weird one, that we were like, okay, why not? We can talk yeah, about this for a minute. Yeah, I sure hope that it requires the car to be stopped to play these games. <laughs> Yeah. Because, well, you mentioned uh, people driving cars. There are some stupid motherfuckers out there. Yeah, doing ridiculous stuff, particularly in the Tesla with its um, autopilot, autopilot or yeah. yeah. When it's Whether really it uh, itself between the lines, yeah, can do some basic road following. Yeah, and people hear autopilot. Well, it's like it's just like Star Trek. It's like Johnny Cab out of Total Recall. And then it turns out to be just as deadly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um. uh, he wants to bring, or is bringing, Atari Classics. Uh, I just saw the list here. Um, uh, Tempest, uh, Missile Command, and Pole Position. With Pole Position actually be controlling uh, controlled by the steering wheel. So I really hope that's parked. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, with, with you, know, you have to almost design around the lowest common denominator, which is sad. You know, have to uh, yeah, as actually lock out these games because if if you haven't seen it, go to Reddit slash Idiots in Cars. Yes, this is one of my new favorite subreddits that you showed me last week at some point. Yeah, there's just some astonishing things people do. And it wouldn't surprise me to see someone try to play pole position with the steering wheel while driving if it's not actually locked out. 
but him wanting to do uh, uh, original games as well, I, I'm not sure what I think about this. You know, it's interesting. It's kind of neat, but it's also, you know, it's, uh, he uh, does some weird, weird shit. <laughs> yeah. There's already some fun and silly stuff in, in the the last couple of years models of Tesla. The, probably because, I mean, they get updates just like any other piece of modern technology. They might be in all of them. Um, but anyways, like, it's got like a party mode where they, when it's in, in park, it'll play Ode to Joy over the stereo and the, the doors and windows will like go up and down and the lights will blink and has like a party and you can and you do uh, cover that flashing lights give you a seizure yeah um you can um turn the gps so that it's mars instead of earth and like all the town and roads are still on there but instead of it being you know like the google earth view of the planet it looks like mars that's pretty that's pretty cute then you have to swerve because the tesla comes from orbit it's got, it's got like an art or a drawing mode on the tablet um, where you can draw pictures and stuff. And let's uh, uh, face it, if you had one, you'd just be drawing dicks all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would definitely just draw dicks. That's the best thing to do is draw dicks. But it's got some other little, little silly stuff in there, too, like that. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they did this, but... Also, yeah, they would have to make it so that you could only play the games while in park or something like that. Because there would be people who would play driving down the road, <laughs> cause accidents, and die. Your car has to be 100% fully autonomous before you can play games and drive at the same time. Yeah. At least safely. What what do you think uh, of the uh, self driving car uh, just in general? Oh, I can't wait. Uh, self driving cars are, cars are already better than people <laughs> at driving. Like there's a um uh, an it's several years old now, but an old CGP Grey video where he talks about automation and things, and the self driving car is one of the big focuses of the video. And basically, his point is like they don't have to be perfect; they just have to be better than you. And they already are. Like the only yeah. What was it? Uh, uh, the only accidents uh, the Google uh, self-driving cars that test cars have been in, or when people have run into them. <laughs> yeah, or uh, the. I think there have been three accidents with Google self-driving cars. Two of them, the cars were hit by other people, and one of them, an actual person was driving the car. And he crashed. <laughs> like the self-driving portion has never had an accident on the open road. So yeah, the only thing that I'm leery of uh, with self-driving cars is that maps have to be up to date. And where I live, maps are a little iffy in places. Yeah. Let's put it this way. All right. Uh, at one point. Because of how the, uh, the some of the coal mines near where I live uh, are, Google Directions kept wanting to be get, to go through several coal mining jobs <laughs> to get to the interstate. <laughs> nice. And because I'm from here, I could look at that and think, no, that would be stupid and illegal. Or they also suggest because of just, I guess, waiting on how the uh, directions uh, are set up, uh, go through some questionable areas. Uh, like there's this one fairly popular, essentially shortcut where I live, where it's this dirt road. It's essentially a one lane road. But because so many people go on it with the GPS, it's considered, I guess, a, a valuable uh, uh, route. And someone that isn't from this area goes on that road is a terrible, 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 terrible idea because there's several places on that road where if you go off of it, you die. I mean, it drops 50 feet 
directly onto railroad tracks. You are fucking dead. And someone from out of state going on that road, especially since it looks fairly safe if you don't know better, will just go right off of it <laughs> because they'll go in- onto this uh, rather fast S turn into this hard left and just sail right off the cliff. And that's the only thing that has me really leery about self-driving cars. But then again, I'm in a odd situation where I'm out in the middle of fucking nowhere. Yeah. But what I do find interesting about self-driving cars is the concept that they could essentially be taxis where you don't have to own the car. You know, you could have uh, essentially rent the car uh, for the day and have it yeah. do its own thing. Mm-hmm. Or they just come pick you up when you need it and drop you off and... Or even, uh, you know, have it be essentially a taxi where, you know, there's a car in the area that's available whenever you need to ride. You go do, uh, it takes you to wherever and drops you off and then it goes back into uh, service. Yeah. I mean, there's already car services that exist to do that. Yeah, they're called taxis. Um, well, yes, but I mean, like, you can, they're in several big cities and it's just like an app that you get on your phone. And you create an account and sign in and basically just like put money on your account. And whenever you need a car, um, the app tells you where the nearest car is to you. You go over to it and you like scan a thing. Um, and then you, the GPS in the car, like it links to you and you can rent it for as long as you want to and, and need to. And then you just take it back um, and drop it off when you're done and scan out. And you're just charged for whatever you're renting that car for for the day. It would be the same sort of idea, but instead of you having to go pick up the car and drive it around, uh, the car just comes to you and takes you where you need to go. Yeah, and you don't even have to park it afterwards. Yeah. I mean, I would... I live kind of in, like, a gray area. Um, You know, there's certain places around here where that a self-driving car would probably do pretty well. But there's certain places around here where it wouldn't. So I'm not sure at this point in time if I if I would buy one for myself or fully rely on like the service of a self-driving car like that. But in the next decade or so, I could see myself, um, us like, you know, we own two cars, maybe drop down to just one car and then use like that service if we ever needed additional, you know, transportation or whatever. It could save tons of money because you wouldn't be paying any of the overhead for vehicle maintenance or for um, uh, registration and taxes and all that jazz. So, like, your per trip ex- cost might be a little bit higher, but overall you'd be saving a lot of money, I think. I don't know. I, I wish that I lived in a more built-up area. I do live in a more built-up area than I used to, but I need, like, we should have taken one more step towards a city in terms of where we live. Although, cost of living, yada yada, we don't need to get into a discussion about economics and cost of living and things like that, but, yeah, just, I'm all for self-driving cars. I like driving, I enjoy driving, I've owned sports cars for most of my life, I enjoy um, going to the track and... Going for Things him? like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, you know. You're I'm pro like, vroom. Just, I'm pro vroom. I'm one step away from a gearhead because I don't like to do tons of that work by myself. I don't like to get dirty. It's I'm lazy. It's time consuming. Get dirty. You are dirty. <laughs> but, like, I'm right there at it. Uh, but, you know, as especially as I get older, I want to be able to do other shit while I'm having to commute to work or going places and doing things like I listen to podcasts. I listen to the news. I make the best use of my time as possible when I'm like commuting every day, but I'd love to have that time to do other stuff. Like sure. I'd still be commuting to and from work, but instead of having to drive, I could be jerking off doing something else. Yeah. I could be jerking off in the morning. (laughs) I could take a nap. I could get a little nap on the way to work play some video games on my laptop or whatever every day on the way to and from work, you know, add a little bit of extra leisure time back into my life. 
Edit a podcast. I could do that. <laughs> well, you could do that right now, but it's not advised. I, you're right. I could. I have let the render run a few times because I've got um, I don't have any built in like power outlets, but I've got a power converter uh, that. What you went to Lo- uh, Mosley Station? Yeah, I went to Toshi Station and got some power converters. Um, but no, I've just got a power converter. It plugs into my cigarette lighter in my car, and I can plug my la- laptop up to it because my battery life isn't super great on my laptop. And uh, I've rendered the podcast before while driving home from the office. Like, I'll get it all edited and saved and then start the render and just carry my laptop out to my car and set it in the seat. And it's done by the time I get home. And you don't even have to turn the heater on your car. (laughs) No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't have to do that anyways with it being 100 and... It was 110 degrees on my way home from Uh, Heat index or actual temperature? No, heat index. Actual temperature was like 96 or 97, which is still too fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a like a 62 degrees kind of person. Like when it's like 62 degrees outside, perfectly happy. So, I'm getting on up there to close to twice what my ideal temperature is. And I'm fat, so that makes it worse. Yeah, you're just uh, laying on the floor of your office, buck naked, covered in sweat. <sighs> Thank, thankfully, the the air conditioner is not broken. If it ever breaks, I'm gonna melt. <laughs> but uh, all right, let's uh, let's move it on to community corner. Yeah, we didn't have um, any... You said we had a couple of tweets. Yeah, we had no emails, so if you wish to remedy that, vglpodcast at gmail.com. But we did have a few tweets, which is VGL Podcast on the Twitter as well. Uh, Jim sent us an article that I only saw just before recording, uh, saying this is a good article on VR development. We uh, are saving that for next week, though, because it's rather lengthy. And we want to give it justice and actually sit down and be able to read it. Uh, and we have a few from Kyle. First of all, boobies! Woohoo! And he sent us a pair of boobies. Uh, unfortunately, not the fun kind. More <laughs> the uh, aviary kind. And also, Kyle set up a poll. Hey, VGL community. Uh, a quick Twitter poll. How many of... Uh, of you out there would consider a snake as a pet. Leave your pa, uh, my poll options aren't fully express your feelings on this subject. And I believe his uh, uh, poll uh, uh, finally said no by 60% with yes uh, snake uh, emoji uh, getting 40%. And that was the only two that got any votes. And he also said a few quick pits of our corn snake to go along with the pole. So, if you see a snake, oh, well, it's right there somewhere on the Twitters. And that was really all the tweets we got. So, once again, VGL Podcast on Twitter. Woohoo. Um. So, Discovery Q or no Discovery Q? Well, we got plenty of time, unless you really get going. Uh, it's getting close to midnight. That's when I like to start wrapping up. So yeah, we can run through it real quick. Yeah, which means I need to head over while you go hit the music. Right. Do we do for Discovery Q? Yeah, and I see something immediately. I don't even have Steam open. That is interesting. It's a very mixed game. It's on early access, so but I need to add this. The Swordsman X. Early access open world samurai game? The Swordsman X is an adrenaline fueled free roaming competitive act. Oh, it's a battle royale game. Oh, I was so excited when I saw you know, a, a samurai game. But you know, melee battle royale could be interesting. It could be. It is something 
that as far as I'm aware, we haven't seen in the Battle Royale genre The conning, before. or the calling. Uh, it was uh, essentially Battle Royale before uh, Battle Royale really became big, and it was mostly Melee. But uh, yeah, I was so excited, then I started reading the description, but I'll leave it in just for the hell of it. It, it, it doesn't look that bad. It makes me wonder what the problems is. Is it just the player base? It, it looks like maybe the player base and there's not enough servers. I need to go check the, uh, the player accounts on this. Because... No, that wouldn't be it. I just want to see what the player accounts are because I'm not on my Chrome version, so... I'm not finding it, <laughs> which is, isn't a, a good sign. What did... On uh, Steam charts. Swordsman. Uh, 1,500 playing now. Okay, well, 4, I just wasn't able to find it real quick. Uh, so Today's peak. That's not great for a Battle Royale game. Today's peak was its all-time peak, though. Well, so... it... Did it just release, or...? Uh, July 27th, so it's not been out long. Yeah, it looks like people are having loading issues on it. And it looks like there may not be a U.S. server. Grant, and considering the kanji, it's probably a Chinese or a Japanese game. Yeah. I don't know enough about the languages to be able to differentiate one from the other. Me neither. <laughs> um, so I got one. Prehistoric Kingdom. Uh, this looks like... I mean, it's a dinosaur park... Manage, theme park management simulator... Thing... Um, it's got a demo, but it doesn't have a, a, a release date announced, nor does it say anything about early access. So essentially this is, uh, uh Jurassic Park, uh, uh, again, with maybe a little bit yeah. more of a management aspect to it from the looks of it. Maybe. Yeah, it does... I mean that uh, that like, that icon looks so Jurassic Park at first, doesn't it? It does. It really does. Just looking at the various screenshots and the couple of trailers, it looks like there's more of a management aspect. Which to wouldn't it. hurt my feelings at, at one bit. Although this looks very early in development. I mean, sure, they could plop it up on early access at any point in time and. You know, mm -hmm. but I mean, this does not look like it's very far along at all. Well, all the trailers have uh, says this is pre alpha for footage. Oh, eight sixteen seventeen available on Steam. Uh, maybe that's a demo, or they just didn't bother to put a release date. Yeah, don't know. So I got another one. Okay, overcooked. Two. Over, oh, nice. Overcooked was a couch co-op uh, cooking game where you have to work together to be able to cook various meals. Overcooked 2, they're, do, uh, they're taking on the most requested suggestion, online co-op. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is going to be on the docket of eventually <laughs> uh, to pick up. I mean, it looks silly. It looks like a lot of fun. Uh, it's more balanced around four-player co-op, though. So, you know, we may have to uh, find friends. Kyle. <laughs> Cube. It is a rather expensive, though. 25 bucks. Whew. But yeah, online co-op. I mean, that's the biggest thing. It's essentially overcooked. If you've seen it before, it's uh, just mayhem. But in the fun way. Not a lot to, more yeah. to say on that one, to be honest. Sorry, I kind of paused there because I, I hear something in the background, but I'm not sure what it is. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just going through. I hear like a hum. Oh! That, that, it's probably my... You hear a hum outside? Yeah. Oh. Don't know. I, I took my headset on to double check. <laughs> But um, I got a second dinosaur theme park. Game. Gee, I wonder why it's giving you dinosaur games now. Yeah, I wonder why. 
Parkasaurus. This is a cutesy, going a, a cartoony route. Um, at first glance, it looks like it could be some kind of mobile port. Well, I'm uh, adding I'm one for see you. If <laughs> I'm looking to see if there's... Okay, here's... Let me look at this trailer. Oh, this does not look good. Not even just, like... Not even the art. It's not that. That's cute. But this looks... Wow. Real janky? That that looks like... Uh, and... It, wow. Roller Coaster Tycoon, as in the original, looked better than this. Yeah. It looks so overly saturated. Yeah. Available summer 2018. Let's see. It's from... Uh, I'm just... I'm heading to their... Uh, uh, the developer's page to... Wash Bear? Yeah. I do believe the neighbor is uh, vacuuming at uh, uh, midnight. And that's why I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a vacuum. Uh, sorry, I've been sitting here trying to you know, figure out what that is. <laughs> uh, yep, this is not a mobile game. Yeah. It's PC only. At least at this point. I mean, it could uh, end up being alright. Uh, the thing is... Oh, wow. Oh, they put hats and uh, sunglasses on the dinosaurs. Sold. Because <laughs> hats. Yeah, I mean, it It could be good. It could be, but it looks real bad. <laughs> but it could also be you know, pre-alpha stuff as well. It could be placeholder stuff. It's yeah. it's hard to say, especially with uh, you know, uh, early access these days. So... I got one that I'm dedicating to you. Okay. Nico Paria Extra. Visual oh, novel. I've seen the, uh, several of the Nico Paria games. Well, this is the newest one uh, out. Uh, it came out uh, just a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's a uh, cutesy, a uh, little bit perverted uh, cat girls uh, visual novel. I mean, that's all you really need to know about that one. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure they also sell the uh, nudie patch on this. Because I'm, excellent. No, no, as in you have to pay extra for it. Oh, not excellent. Nudity, excellent. Paying for my nudity? Nah. Eh. Did you get anything else? No, my cue's done. I'm only I have uh, a whole bunch of. I'm only halfway through. <laughs> And then I also got that sam samurai or ninja battle royale yeah, I, game, yeah, was, but you had already found it or already had it, so I skipped by it. Yeah, I was so excited about that because that's something that you don't see too often. I mean, you see them occasionally, but okay. So Trailblazers, this uh, essentially looks like uh, F Zero uh, with a different skin, of course, but it's the same basic idea: going stupid fast. Uh, it looks like, well, they said uh, it requires a controller to play, which, honestly, with this game, or if it's uh, anything with how it looks, don't blame them on that. I uh, don't hold that against them. But co-op racing game. Yeah, uh, pr pretty much just uh, F-Zero. Not a lot to say there, unless you have something. No, I don't, I don't think so. Let's see. Newest F1 game. No, thank you. Nope. Hell no. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot they relaunched that. Uh, I'm going to put this on my list, but I'm. it's probably going to be in vain of your warning against. Uh, remember okay. the Defiance MMO? Yeah. They relaunched it. And from everything that I've heard, they've uh, made it worse. They screwed up the... Mostly negative. Yeah, which is impressive, huh? Wiped yeah. uh, some progression. They've uh, uh, screwed up some things. Uh, uh, broke some things. Let's see. Uh, the MMO... Uh, I'm going to read off one of the uh, reviews. The MMO based on a short-lived uh, sci-fi... Or sorry, Siffy original series... To be the next one uh, on the block to get the remastered treatment. Unfortunately, no one seems to have told Tryon 
Yeah, a remaster needs to, at the very least, be as good as the original. <laughs> so, yeah, this is... It is free to play, so yeah, you're just wasting your time at worst, but... The fact that it's mostly negative is impressive. And I'm on my last one. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of racing games, by the way. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm done. Uh, uh, I got a lot of really crappy racing games on the tail end of mine. So that is the Discovery Q. And once again, I end up getting a bunch more. Uh, do you want to, do you want to borrow Swordman X? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I was so excited about that. Oh, I, I feel so bait and switched. I feel so used. But to be honest, you would have probably put it on yours, right? Because you probably didn't yeah. see the Battle Royale at the first anyway. Yeah. I feel unclean. Uh, more so than a usual Tuesday night. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some lovin's. You'll feel all better. No, that made me feel worse. <laughs> so, moving on to the portion of the podcast thing where I go first... If you want to see my stuff over on on the YouTubes, you can do so by searching for Gaming Psychologist. We are going to start putting up our Spin Tires Mud Runner series uh, next week, right? That's what we yeah. said. So, yeah. Uh, what 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 day are we going to go for? I was thinking our usual Wednesday Saturday. Sweet. Yeah, uh, noon be. Eastern time. Can do so. Yeah, next weekend you will see the first of our. Uh, no, next episodes. weekend they'll see the second. Next, I said next week. You said next weekend. Uh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. At least I thought you said next weekend. I could be wrong. I, 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 I'm sitting matter. here li next, listening to the vacuum. <laughs> next Wednesday you'll see the first on my channel. Uh, which which was the first one that we did the the bog is that the first level in the list? Uh, I would have to bring up my uh, list of episodes because I do have them named. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's the first one. Ready to process? Spin tires, bun runner, the bog, then the island, seashore, then we get to the fun ones. <laughs> yeah, so you'll see that as well as the podcast or the weekly podcast YouTube video. Um, I've got a new idea cooking I, that I'm going to do some testing on. And yes, cooking uh, is involved. Oh, actually. no. <laughs> Based on our little secret, I've got an idea. Like, it's been, been ruminating oh, no. this, whole, what, this whole recording time. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I might do some testing on it. But I never make promises because I don't know if I'll be able to keep them. I pretty much just do stuff that I find fun. You don't so, have plans. We'll you see. just do things. Indeed. If you want to follow me on Twitter, where I got into some very interesting Twitter <laughs> discussions over the weekend, which I have thus far had self-control and not mentioned on the podcast. But, uh, well, some... Uh, some uh, third wave feminists with an agenda got into. You know what? If you want to find out, just go check out on my Twitter account. It's too lengthy and complicated to explain. And I do want to go to bed tonight at some point. So just head on over to Twitter. Look me up at JMA4707. You can follow me. Um, there's a pretty massive thread or discussion. That goes on for a couple of days before I finally just gave up, like trying to be reasonable. And well, see, that's just, was that like, was your failing. You tried to be, uh, you tried to reason with it. I got quite a few Twitter followers though, and there were plenty of people who were on my side, or at least like neutral. Like, you know what? There's good points being made by both groups of people. Let's just ring, you know, bring it down a little bit and talk about this. And all of those people followed me on Twitter, so hello, new Twitter followers, if you also happen to find your way over to the podcast. I know I mentioned it to a couple of you. Yeah, if uh, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm if not. you want to find out what went down, just go on over and and browse through my, my tweets from the weekend. 
uh, I guess at the time of release of this episode last weekend. Um, and then if you want to know in more detail the context of the situation, I don't mind to talk about it. But, I mean, it would take me 15 or 20 minutes to explain the whole saga at this point. Uh, and like I said, I do want to go to bed at some point. <laughs> um, I'm not home for that one you, again. If you want to see me post stuff on Twitch using the Twitch Premiere system, or if you want a quick and easy way to find some people in our community that also stream, um, I rebroadcast all of their streams. You can head on over to twitch.tv slash jarthur4707. You don't necessarily have to just stick there, but if you want to find them, you can uh, get to them through there as well. Um, and then finally, my username on Steam is jarthur4707. You can send me any sort of messages, questions, have conversations, and be my friend. I accept all friend requests from people, uh, and I've made quite a few friends in the couple of years we've been doing this. Um, also, I've gotten a couple or some some new questions that I added to the list, um, and we're we've, we're talking about doing some questions soon, but we just yeah, need we... to prepare them, and we didn't do that beforehand. But if you have questions you want to send in, please send them to me, and I will curate them and add them to the list. Um, I actually got a, several similar questions over the last couple of weeks. Uh, did, um, are after... they all uh, saying what the fuck? <laughs> no, they're all related to video game movies, actually. We didn't talk about it on the show, but Nathan Fillion did an Uncharted fan short film. It's like 20 minutes. Uh, speaking of video game movies, uh, my latest tweet is about that. <laughs> nice. But a lot of people have asked a similar question somewhere in the realm of like, wow, if video game movies, like full-length video game movies were made like this, they would be good. Like, what do you think about this? Or, you know, are there any hidden gems of actual well-produced video game movies that you know of? And it's all sort of uh, stemming from that. So I kind of generalized the question and put that in our list and then added an extra little bonus from me like I thought that I had that we can maybe talk about in a next time or in a couple of episodes. But anyways, yeah. JArthur4707. Send me your friend request. I'll accept it. Send me your questions. Send me some interesting topics of discussion. And I'll be there to chat with you. You could also send them the password for the week to let them know exactly what episode of the podcast you're coming from. And of course, the password for this week is balls. <laughs> balls. Well, well, played. well played. And that's with a Z, by the way. Or with a Z, depending on where you live. Nice. Balls. <laughs> so what about you, buddy? What's going on and where can they find you? Oh, uh, well, I'm over at Gaming with Caffeine Rage, where for now I still just have RimWorld going. I haven't gone through the choosing. And of course, well, you've also mentioned that Spin Tires Bud Runner is starting up next week, which will also be on my channel. If you wish to see some of the more boring yet competent gameplay. <laughs> is that unfair? Um, we've each had our moments, but I'd say I've had more moments than you with, in terms of, uh, mishaps, <laughs> ha- happy little accidents. Well, That's what uh, well been. some of them uh, for you did involve a tree. <laughs> I've had several mishaps with water. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I need to sit down and figure out the other game to be playing and I just haven't sat down and done it yet. I have my short list done. It's just need to do the recording testing and do more extensive recording testing this time around. Granted, Last time I reco- did testing for three hours and things still broke. So, yeah. But Gaming with Caffeine Rage on the YouTubes, or you can see me tweet over at Gaming with CR where I've been actually active in the last few days. My last one was a retweet on uh, the announcement uh, for the Sonic movie. And first of all, yes, there is a Sonic movie. And did you see the uh, casting announcement? No. Uh, Jim Carrey is going to be Dr. Robotnik. Huh. And I'm not sure what distresses me more, that casting announcement or the fact that there's a Sonic movie. Well, I knew that there was a Sonic movie. 
I, I forgot about it. And it's going to be a CG slash live action one. So does that mean it's going to be Jim Carrey live action as Dr. Robotnik? Uh, and, pro- probably, but Jim Carrey could do it. Oh, Jim Carrey, maybe. Well, Jim Carrey's getting old, so there you go. Eh? I just see him as too wacky for Robotnik. I mean, don't get me wrong, Robotnik, uh, at least on the cartoons, was wacky, but not Jim Carrey level wacky. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I suppose we'll find out, but I think he could do it. And I've also been bitching about you know, Halloween candy already being sold, you know? Yeah. Uh, but you can find that over at Gaming with CR on the Twitters. If you wish to see me bitch about who knows what. Maybe I should have posted my uh, uh, bell peppers, you know? At least then I would have had something about me not complaining, right? Maybe so. <laughs> Although complaining is your thing, so. Almost like I'm uh, getting old and bitter or something, right? Yeah. As I uh, stall for time as I scroll back up. <laughs> and then scroll too far and scroll back down. Okay, so... Once again, if you wish to see us uh, or send us something on the Twitters, you could do so VGL Podcast or just email us VGL Podcast at gmail.com with your letters, voicemails, gaming related topics, or questions for Jared to call. Okay, that's probably a little mean, but he'll curate them, right? Absolutely. Curate with love. And if you used to curate us with money, you could do so. Patreon.com slash VGL Podcast, which has paid for our Podbean account. VGLpodcast.podbean.com As well as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and now Spotify. But our Podbean account does have the RSS feed if you don't wish to use any of those. And also our show notes. So you could skip all the boring bits and get right to the portion where we end the podcast, right? <laughs> 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 absolutely and uh, speaking of ending the podcast our intro and outro music is on the ground by uh, Kevin McLeod and our discovery cue music is doobly doo by the same artist his work can be found at incomputech.com and as always as this lovely music starts to roll across my voice bye bye now oh, see you next time bye bye So, the fact that they're making a Sonic movie and trying to make it a serious guy in Green Hill Zone, a cop trying to help Sonic escape the government. What the fuck? Yes. I'm on board for this. It sounds stupid as shit. (laughs) And B-movie as fuck. And I'm all about that. Yeah, but the thing is that they're going to ruin it by having too good a CGI. They need to have Sonic be obviously CGI, you know? I want this movie to be so bad it's good. I don't want it to be good at all. I don't even want to pretend that it's a good movie. I want it to be terrible, but hilarious. Yeah, but they're pouring too much money into this to make it, uh, you know, uh, uh, be uh, uh, bad. Or, yeah, be that bad, I should say. There's bad, then there's that bad. And the fact. Did you see the Speed Racer movie? They spent a shitload of money on that movie, and it's terrible. Yeah, but let's be honest. John Goodman isn't. Uh, does it require the budget that Jim Carrey does? Don't get me wrong. I like my John Goodman, but you know there are different levels of uh, salary. You know. Yeah, and the fact that they have uh, Jim Carrey as the bad guy makes me think that they're going to have a, a shitload of salary. As a matter of fact, I suppose we'll find out. What was the, uh, let's see, IMDb. Because uh, they had some other uh, cast listing as well. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2019. Uh, to be fair, I, I don't know why I'm looking at the cast list because I don't really watch movies, so I, these names are you know, completely uh, lost on me. <laughs> 
IMD. Let me, let me go look at it. Because I, I do watch movies. I like, I watch a lot of movies. Sonic. Sonic. Yeah, a cop in a rural town of Green Hills will help Sonic escape from the government who's looking to capture him. That, that. <laughs> and Jim Carrey's the biggest name attached to this. Jim Carrey. James Marsden. I recognize him from... X-Men. Something. He was in X-Men. He was Cyclops. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Granted, I'm guessing that's the cop. Let's see. Full cast. Notice they haven't announced who Sonic is. Yeah, there's a lot of cast. Okay, okay. Cast missing. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> I just had a thought, okay? To put it in the so bad it's good, they don't CGI Sonic, all right? All right? Uh-huh. Danny DeVito painted blue. Okay. That's Sonic. Nice. I could handle that. <laughs> I could go for that. And it'd be about the right size. All right. I don't know. I don't know this lady. Genie. Whatever. Nope. I don't recognize this girl from anything. Debs Howard. Natasha Rothwell. I don't recognize her for anything either. I thought for a second she was on one of the Marvel TV shows. So um, I guess she just looks like one of the characters. So this is. So we have Truman and uh, Cyclops. Yeah. Or Ace Ventura and Cyclops, depending on which side of Jim Carrey we're going with. Well, this lady was the wife in in Ride Along. <laughs> Tika Sumter. She was uh, Chris Rock's wife in the movie. Uh, she was an ex, or she was a bit part in Salt. The Angelina Jolie movie from 2010, where she's like some kind of oh, the documentary about Twitch or chat? something. Yeah, that's the only things I know her from, and I don't remember her from Salt because she's just she's credited as a, as front desk woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Chris Rock's wife is a step up from that. Oh, but oh, they're playing a trailer for something that Natalie Dormer's in. She's uh, she was Marjorie Tyrell in on Game of Thrones, and she's also like one of the the hottest actresses alive. I'd bone down. <laughs> All right, we're like in another section. This is not just the post, whatever. So uh, goodbye, <laughs> good night. <laughs>